in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed this is Bible study tonight. The book of Ephesians. Can we pray for two minutes? Just prophesy to yourself. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm above. Whatever the word of God says, I am, I am. Prophesy to yourself while praying. In the name of Jesus, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. The hand of God is upon my life. The grace of God is at work in me. The hedge of covering is around me. I shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence. A thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side. None shall harm me. With my eyes shall I watch and see the reward of the wicked. Thou shalt comfort me on every side. In the name of Jesus, prophesy. I'm separated from the peril of wickedness. I am blessed, blessed of the Lord. The hand of God is upon me. His anointing is speaking. Speaking about the angels. Are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister to me because I am an heir of salvation. I'm seated with Christ. I am the glory of God. I have no covenant with death. Say it, pray. I have no covenant with death. Not by the sword. Not by wicked men. Not by evil people. Every tongue that rises up against me falls for my sake. In the name of Jesus, the blessing of the Lord is upon me. I live long. I am confident. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Goodness and mercies follow me all the days of my life. I move from glory to glory, ever increasing faith, ever increasing grace, ever increasing glory. Doors of opportunity are opened up to me. I hide the word of God in my spirit. I hide the word of God in my spirit. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm full of the anointing. I have an unction from the Holy One and it teaches me all things. I know all things by the Spirit. My mind is blessed. No divination, no witchcraft, no sorcery, no enchantment. Every handwriting has been blotted out. I shall not suffer the sins of the fathers. I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar person. I've been called out to show forth the praises of him who has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm of the commonwealth of Israel. I belong to the glorious family. Hallelujah. I walk in prosperity, ever increasing prosperity. I walk in health. I refuse sickness. I refuse sickness. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs. We are for wonders. We are for signs. Surely they shall gather. But because they are gathering of God of the Lord, they shall scatter. My family is preserved, prophesy. My family is preserved from the wicked. I'm the redeemed of the Lord, I say so. I'm the blessed of the Lord, I say so. I'm the anointed of the Lord, I say so. I have the wisdom of God. I know what to do at every time, in every situation. I'm guided by the Spirit. I am.
am blessed. I walk not in the counsel of the wicked. I do not stand in the way of sinners. I do not sit in the seat of scoffers. But my delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law I meditate day and night. I'm like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. I yield my fruits in season. My leaf does not wither. Whatsoever I do prospers. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, yes, holy goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I walk in the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Your words have prophetic implications. And that every time you begin to speak, you send signals in the spirit. You know how a plane is coming and there is a communication between the tower and the plane. When you prophesy, you send signals in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are training you to be a dangerous people. Dangerous. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he stepped into a place. He didn't talk to the demons. He didn't talk to the devils. But when they saw him, they began to make negotiations. When you become so full of the word and so full of the Holy Ghost, you become dangerous. At that point, you can dislodge principalities and powers over your family and over your life. Say, I'm not weak. I am strong. Strong in the Lord. Yes. Daniel 11, 32. It says, and they that know their God, they shall be strong. They shall do exploits. Hallelujah. You are not wasting your time here. Every time you invest in the word, Every time you invest in the presence of God, I assure you, you are not wasting your time. God is building you. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, as you worship, because Satan is mapping out his arsenals. And on the other side, God is raising an army. And kingdoms will rise against kingdom. But light shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. Never has there been a time where light had to negotiate with darkness. And the Bible says the entrance of his word. Give that light. So you become full of that light. Everywhere you step in, you dislodge darkness. Hallelujah. The book of Ephesians. You see, I don't like the devil. Look at me. Let me tell you something. I don't like the devil. I have no business with him. He has no business with me. We are not friends. Hallelujah. We're going to be studying the book of Ephesians. It's a Bible study, so please bring out something to write. There are some of you who, if you did not hear this girl's testimony, you will not bring out writing materials. Now you are bringing out your Bible. Say, I better write now. Don't be afraid of entering car or entering all of these things. If the, Satan, if, if, if the devil drives my car, I will still enter. Because he will take me safely. I assure you, he will take me safely. He will not even know what came upon him, but he will drive me safely. See, I've met armed robbers on the road. I have seen demons. It's just that God has said I won't die. You don't know what I've gone through. So don't you just say, I share you are enjoying. Where do you get? <laughs> when you become full of the word, you will be victorious. See, if you refuse to be full of the word, 
you will think we are acting this thing on stage. That's the problem. Those who don't invest in the world think it's just acting. They say it's not true, Jared. This person is just talking. When I tell you there is a realm that you can rise above sickness, there is a realm that you can rise above failure, there is a realm that you can rise above the oppressions of Satan. There is such a realm. And we are contending to enter that rest. But there is that rest. And the Bible says, let us therefore labor. This is where we are laboring. In the word. In prayer. So that we we'll enter that rest. There is that rest. Hallelujah. Now, the book of Ephesians. Um, it was written by Apostle Paul. I just want to give you a little background. The book of Ephesians theologically speaking it's it's been agreed among theologians and bible scholars that the book of ephesians contains one of the highest church truth do you understand it contains one of the the highest explanation it gives the most precise description of the believer's work as far as um, our work in the kingdom is concerned paul used the first uh, six chapters to explain uh, different areas of the Christian life. Hallelujah. Was written to the church in Ephesus, helping them to understand the realities of the life. I hope you understand that Paul uh, was not necessarily taught his revelations. I, I follow me now. He got it expressly by the Spirit. And so he got his revelation and so he wrote this thing to the church but it was not just supposed to stop with the Ephesian church it was supposed to be spread around all the churches that he had planted because it contains certain truth that Paul had received from the spirit and we're going to be considering these things hallelujah broadly is divided into three the first three chapters of Ephesians talk about our position in Christ the realities what we call new creation realities it helps us to understand who we are on account of what Christ has done for us. So we are going to be examining that. The first three chapters, the book of Ephesians, attempts to discuss what we have become. It contrasts who we were outside of Christ and outside of the commonwealth of Israel. And then what the redemption of Christ has brought to us as a believer. Hallelujah. So, at the end of studying the first three chapters of Ephesians, you are supposed to know who you are. The whole concept of the plan of redemption. What really happened? We fell from grace. What kind of grace? So, you get to understand the concept of grace and of redemption and the fact that for all have sinned, the concept of righteousness and the work, the, 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 the rest in place. Hallelujah. So, it teaches you and reveals to you your position that you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's the summary of the first subdivision of the book of Ephesians. It teaches you how to walk in the reality of your position seated in Christ. Hallelujah. And then chapter 4 and 5 gets to discuss what we call the walk of the believer. It talks about conduct and character. How you walk in the kingdom. W-A-L-K. It teaches you how to walk. How you can live as a kingdom citizen begins to guide you on the principles. That's where it begins to talk of spirit-filled living. Talking about living in the word. Living in character. Living, conducting yourself such that you can be seen as a Christian. Hallelujah. And then chapter 6 teaches you how to stand. Hallelujah. That's where a lot of ministries get the concept of warfare. It teaches you how to stand in your position in Christ against the wiles of the devil. So it teaches you your position of rest in Christ. And then it teaches you how to walk. And then it teaches you how to stand. Hallelujah. Tells you how to stand with all the armor that you have been equipped with. The breastplate of righteousness. The helmet of salvation. Your shoe guarded about. It tells you all of those things. Holding forth the shield of faith. Wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts. So we are going to be examining this. At the end of this study. You are supposed to come into that experiential position. 
where you know who you are in Christ. You are aware, you are convinced of the blessings and the benefits of redemption. And then you know how to walk and to live as a Christian. Now, the entire book is very, every time you are studying the book of Ephesians, it's important to study all the six chapters because when you study only one part of it, you will have a, a misguided knowledge. Hallelujah. If the Bible tells us we have been seated in Christ, why does it teach us to stand against the wiles of the enemy again? Are you following me now? If the Bible tells us that we are seated in Christ, then why should it tell us again to still guard? I mean, you are seated with Christ. Satan cannot come there. The Bible says he was judged out of heaven. And there was no place for him again. Remember the book of Revelations. He said there was war in heaven. Lucifer, that old serpent. He was judged, casted to the earth. And there was no more place for him. That's what Jesus was speaking in Luke. When he said, I beheld Satan falling as lightning. Why as lightning? Because the angels move in that speed. He said he maketh his angels wind. And his ministers flames of fire. And so he was casted from the heavens. Because remember in the book of Job, the Bible says when the sons of God gathered, Satan was in their midst. I hope you realize that the Bible was not written in chronological order. That means in the order with which they happened. If the Bible was written in chronological order, Job would be before Exodus. Are you listening to me? So the Bible was not arranged in chronological order. The dispensation of Job was called the dispensation of conscience. Because we do not see the manifestations of the law there. Hallelujah. The progression of the dealings of God with man is that from the Garden of Eden, right from the Garden of Eden, when man fell, the word of God reveals to us that God had known. I hope you realize that God, immediately man fell, it was revealed in the Garden there. That the redemption of man will be the ultimate uh, solution through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that God killed a lamb and used it to cover what? Adam and Eve. That was a type of the substitutionary work of Jesus. It was a prophetic type of the atonement shown in the garden there. Are you listening to me? And now Adam, Adam was the first man God created after the judgment. Listen to me. Not the first man that was created in eternities. Adam is not the first man who was created from forever. No. Adam was the first man created after the fall of Lucifer. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. We are doing Bible study. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Then verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Comes from two Hebrew words, tohu. Bohu. All of them, all these Greek words, they mean confusion and chaos, darkness. Every time the Bible talks about darkness, there are three words. One, ignorance. Two, confusion. Three, the manifestation of the workings of the flesh. So every time you study the Bible and it talks about darkness, it's talking about confusion, it's talking about ignorance. Every time the Bible talks of light, it doesn't just talk of the presence of God, it talks of illumination. And God said, let there be light. That light was not sunlight. Because a few verses later, the Bible says God made many lights. So what lights did he say let there be? Hallelujah. So let's establish the fact that Abba, Adam was not the first man on the earth. He was the first man created in the image and the likeness of God. Why? Because I needed to understand that between Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2 were many, many years. Are you listening to me? It didn't just happen the way the Bible summarized it. 28. That's where the Bible gives us a description of the one we know as Satan today. The one we call Lucifer. I hope you know Lucifer was once an archangel. Lucifer was the archangel in charge of worship. Just like Michael being the archangel in charge of war. Every time the Bible talks of the manifestation of war and standing in for the saints, the archangel that is sent is Michael. And every time there is an activity that requires service, delivering a message, is who? Gabriel. That's why when Daniel was praying, 
Daniel said he began to pray and for three weeks he was praying and Gabriel was bringing him a message but the prince that was surrounding the territory of Persia because the Bible tells us that the it gives us the the, the, the arrangement, the strategic arrangement of what we want to call the satanic kingdom. Hallelujah. It says, we do not, our, our, our wrestle is not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers and rulers. And then it talks of some that do not function in the earth realm. It calls them spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. These are the ones that are in charge of territories. And now this spiritual wickedness was in charge of Persia. Because Daniel and the other people were caught in the Babylonian captivity at that time. And so he, he began to seek the face of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when Gabriel was bringing the reply, the prince of Persia stopped Gabriel. But Gabriel is an archangel. Should he not fight? No. The angels do not break their ranks. And so he kept praying until Michael, the archangel, came. Hallelujah. Remember in the book of Jude, when the Bible says, some of you don't read your Bible, when there was struggle over the body of Moses. The Bible says how that, who? Michael was struggling. He was supposed to take the body of Moses and sit and say, it belongs to me. And now Michael could not fight there. He said, the Lord, because this was Satan. Are you listening to me now? The Lord rebuke you. Are you still here? So Satan was cast. And when he was cast, I want you to understand, according to scripture, the Bible says one third of the angels fell with him. Hallelujah. Imagine the kind of influence. Satan was the value cherub. The Bible calls him, there's no time, sorry, I would have gone in depth. Hallelujah. He calls him the value cherub that covereth. His embodiment it was made of the objects of worship and he had access to the heavens and the earth i hope you know by that time the then heaven here was there was no blockage between the heavens and the earth there was free access and satan could walk upon the holy mount of god until iniquity was found in him what was the iniquity he said i will exalt myself and i will arise above the stars of god he wanted the position of god because he felt he could legislate and Satan alongside all the other demons. One of them being the demon spirits called Leviathan. How many of you have read about Leviathan? Some of you don't read your Bible, only I, I receive. This it just makes you grounded. And then the Bible talks about the manifestation of Satan again. It talks of Apollyon. These were all of the, of the angels that fell together with Lucifer. Hallelujah. And so, when they fell, you see, flood in scripture is symbolic of judgment. Are you listening to me? That was the, it was the judgment of Lucifer. He's casting down from the heavens that led to the chaos of Genesis 1 verse 2. Do you understand now? Now the earth was dark, void. And then the Bible, when it was time to recreate the earth, then Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the singular is Eloha, one of the trinity, Three of them or any once is more than one is elohim in the hebrew and elohim said light be in other words i withdrew you that light listen is the life giving dimension of god because when jesus manifested in the book of john the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he said it was with god in the beginning and through him was all things made and without him was nothing made that was made he said in him was what light and that light was the life of man. So when he was saying, let there be light, he was releasing that factor, that dimension of him that causes things to exist. He said, let there be light. And he said, there was light. And he saw that it was good. Then he began to recreate the earth. And then he made man from the dust of the earth. I hope you know when he made man, the word man there is Adam. Adam is not just the name of Adam. Are you listening to me? In the Hebrew, Adam is man, dust. The woman was inside the man when he pronounced the blessing. That's why whether you're a woman or man, you can walk in the reality of what the word of God says. The separation happened in Genesis chapter 2. When he caused man to sleep and he took out of that man the rib and created the woman. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? 
So when you say women are weaker vessels, based on what? Because when the blessing was being spoken to the man, Adam, the woman was in the man. Are you listening to me now? And so Adam became the, the first recreated man in the image and the likeness of God. What is the image of God? The image of God is not physical. The likeness of God means two hands. God has two hands, not three. The Bible tells us there is a right hand, meaning there is a left one. Are you listening to me? You would have just said hand. Hallelujah. You use scripture to compare scripture. We call it systematic theology. How you can use one scripture to explain and give light to another scripture. And then you are, you are unable to take just one aspect of scripture and create a doctrine out of it until you can find the same operation in both the Old and the New Testament. Because the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses is a matter established. Are you following me now? So one is the number of unity. Two is the number of witness. Are you listening to me? When the Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Now, Hebrew is a very big word. The only word that is close to Hebrew is, that we can liken in Nigeria is Yoruba. You can have many words. Do you understand? For instance, the word en in Hebrew, en, it means what is, at, for. So it depends on the context. You need the Holy Ghost to be able to interpret some of these scriptures. That's why those who interpreted the early translations of the Bible misuse certain words like authority and power. There are four words in scripture that are used to connote power. One is called kratos. One is called iskos. One is called exousia. The other one is called dunamis. Most people just know dunamis and exousia. Exousia is the outworking of the word. Every time you take in the word in your spirit, what happens is there is a buildup of what we call kratos, the inworking of the word. When you are full of the word, what you release is the outworking, exousia, the power of atony. You are so full of the word that now you can represent him. And so when you take out time and pray in tongues, the buildup of that dimension in you is called iskos. It's the power, the inner workings of the spirit. When he says building up yourself, on your most holy faith that's the build up so when you lay hands on the sick what you release is dunamis the power the ability of the spirit able to reproduce itself that's why you can lay hands on 100 people it's like fire you can use one candlestick to light many are you listening to me now where are we we've left the book of Ephesians are you learning something we want us to know the word of God and to appreciate the workings of the word. So God created man. Let me tell you something about Satan. Satan is a spirit. One of the fallen angels now fallen. Are you listening to me? He is fallen. See after me, Satan is falling. There are certain attributes of Satan I would want you to know even as we start. Number one, Satan is not omnipotent. In fact, let me put it this way. There are three attributes that make God, God all by himself. Number one, he's omnipotent. The word omni means all. Potent means ability. All powerful. Omnipotent. The, number two, he's omniscient. Omniscient means all knowing. All knowing. He knows all things. Number three, he's omnipresent. The psalmist said, where can we hide from your presence? Omnipresence means it's everywhere. Whoever can possess these three attributes at any given time is called God. Whoever at any given time can be omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, God. This is what Satan cannot be everywhere at the same time. Are you listening to me? For instance, he's not here. Are you listening to me? So don't just sit in that fear and say, hey, is Satan? No, Satan is not everywhere. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. Because when he went to God in the book of Job, God asked him, he said, ah, from where are you coming? He said, what? From going to and fro. But you never hear God saying going to and fro. It's only his eyes that go to and fro. He's called Alpha Omega. The word an is an error in the translation. It's not and omega. Alpha omega. That means there is nothing called future in his presence. Everything lays bare. It's not called alpha and omega. 
Alpha is the first of the Hebrew letters. Omega is the, is the last. So it says he's the first and the last. Alpha, Omega. Hallelujah. So Satan manifests with different spirits. Different manifestations of spirits. Hallelujah. And there are many of them. Death is one of them. Death is not a phenomenon. Death is a spirit. Are you listening to me? The Bible says that there were four riders upon the horse in the book of Revelation. And it said one of them held a pair of balances and the name of that spirit is death. So it's a spirit. Hell is a spirit for instance. Hell is not just a location. I've told you hell is in the earth. Hell is right at the center of the earth. Hell lies in the shape of a man and enlarges itself every time. The psalm is seeing this by revelation. He said, hell, enlarge itself. He said, I will go down to the pit where they are warm, dieth not. Hallelujah. I hope you know that Jonah went to hell. Jonah didn't just stay in the belly of the fish. Jonah went to hell. Jonah began to give descriptions of the gates and those in chains and in hell. So hell is a spirit. The Bible says that at the judgment, when the sea will give up all those that died in it. Are you listening to me? And then he said, hell will give up all those that died in it. He said, hell, death, the last spirit that will be destroyed is death. He said, hell, death, and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. No man is in the lake of fire right now. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. He designed the lake of fire for the punishment of Satan. So all those that have died and gone to hell have not started the punishment. It is when Satan is officially taken to hell that their punishment will start reading. Because every time we, we call it in theology the doctrine of interpenetration, how two people can become one. That's the mystery of marriage. Wherefore shall a man leave his what? Father and mother and cleave to his wife and they too shall become what? One. That's how the bride and the spirit, the church and the Holy Ghost became one. He that is joined to Christ is what? One spirit. Now he that is joined to Satan is also one spirit. Are you listening to me? He that is joined to Satan is one spirit. So how does Satan carry out all his activities? He tries to mimic the operation of the Trinity because the administrative structure of heaven is such that the Father is always the initiator. The Word is the one who speaks things into be. The Holy Spirit is the Pentecostal arm of the Trinity. He's the one who makes things happen. That's why in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, he was the first of the deity to be revealed. And the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. Now, Satan also tries to mimic the operational organogram of heaven by trying to create what we know as 666. 666 is not just something people will receive on their head and their hand. 666 is the number of a man. Are you listening to me? One is the number of unity. Two is the number of witness. Three is the number of establishing a thing. And then it's also the number of trinity. Four is the operation of the Holy Spirit. Five is the number of grace and mercy. Six is the number of a man. Seven is the number of perfection. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Are you following me now? So, 666 is Satan trying to mimic the operation of God. The first six stands for Satan who wants to be the father himself. The second six stands for the Antichrist. The Antichrist is both a system and a person. The Antichrist government started at the birth of Cain. And Cain departed from the presence of God and built a city, naming it after his son Enoch. The same spirit of the Antichrist followed Nimrod. And Nimrod said, let's build a city whose tower will reach the heaven. The same spirit was upon Nebuchadnezzar and he built Babylon. The same spirit was upon Jezebel and Ahaz. The same spirit was upon Herod. The same spirit was upon Herod in the book of Acts. And the same spirit is what is explained in the book of Revelation, the mystery Babylon. So there is the Antichrist as a system. But there is the Antichrist as a person. And that person is the one who tries to mimic Jesus. When you read the book of Revelation, it tells us that the Antichrist will not have anything to do with women because Jesus did not marry. The Antichrist will die and he will come back to life. Power will be given to him. The dragon will give him power. And then the last six stands for the false prophets who stand trying to mimic the Holy Spirit. Why are there many? Because the Holy Spirit is the only Holy Spirit we have. We don't have many. 
we have him but because satan cannot be omnipresent so he uses many people your rap artists your your the, the touts around town they are all the manifestation of that spirit are you getting something so satan is not a mystery satan is a person he cannot be everywhere at the same time are you listening to me and hear what I, I know why i'm talking to you about satan because we're about to examine something briefly seated with christ the book of ephesians we're, we're taking the first chapters when when you when i read the chapters now you will understand based on the foundations that i've laid now look at me please quickly let me explain something what did man lose I need to explain to you what man lost first and foremost please can i have someone a guy and then can i have someone help me with a veil please we are going to the garden of eden right now i'm not going to be a lady i'm not one of the stupid people in society who change themselves from men from men to women hallelujah now this is righteousness. This is not a woman. Righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, look, look at me. Listen. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And Elohim said, let us make man in our own image. Are you listening to me? And now the Bible says that Christ is the express image of God. That means let us make man in Christ. Are you listening to me? That means let us look at the word and reproduce man out of the word. The first Adam was created, the second Adam was born. Unto us a child is given. Are you listening to me? That's why he, he was, when Jesus came to the earth, listen to me, he was the only son of the father. When he resurrected, after Acts chapter 2, he became the firstborn of the begotten. He's no longer the only son of the father. What are you? Are you listening to me? You are a son, whether you are a lady. The word son is not male figure. The word son is weos and technon. I've taught you this. Weos and technon. Technon means a child, baby. One who is void of knowledge, but you are still son. So the Bible says, as many as received him, he gave them power to become sons. Are you listening to me? So, now this is Adam. Listen. Adam was made in the image and the likeness of Christ. And authority was given to Adam. Listen, the condition to be able to walk with God is that you must have righteousness equal to that of Jesus, not less. Are you listening to me? So, God created man in the very righteousness of Christ. So, God could come in the cool of the day and function with man. But you know, before man was created, Satan had already been casted, so he was roaming around. That's why he told him, he said, subdue. The word subdue means there's an enemy roaming around. Are you listening to me? Now watch this. Satan comes in Genesis chapter 3 and meets Eve. Why Eve? Because Eve was the woman taken out of man. The authority was given to man. Are you listening to me? And Satan came to Eve in an attempt to tempt Eve because Adam loved Eve. I hope you realize that when Eve was eating of the tree, Adam was not somewhere tilling the ground. He was there with her. So ladies, don't let anybody tell you it's you that caused trouble. Why didn't he stop her? Adam was there. She ate it and gave him. What made him to eat it? Love. 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 It's still what is throwing people today. Love. No, now follow this. Are you listening to me? So Satan, listen. Satan's ultimate quest was not Eve. He needed to use Eve to get Adam. So now the second Adam comes as Christ and the Eve is now the church. Are you listening to me? So Satan still wants to take that authority, but now he's attacking the Eve of the second Adam, which is the church, the body of Christ. That's why the Bible calls us the bride of Christ. We are the bride of that second Adam. Now, he has righteousness. Satan comes and tells Eve, did God really say that in the day you eat of this tree, you will die? Let me tell you Satan's strategy. Every time Satan comes to you, the first thing he will do is to attack what God told you. God announced over Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He goes to the wilderness after 40 days. Satan said, if you are really the son of God, didn't God just say it? 40 days ago, God said it. 
Satan said, if it is true, prove it. Just like Satan looks at you and says, if you are truly beautiful, prove it. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone. What is bread? A bread is what nourishes the body. So man shall not live by sensory perceptions alone, but by every rhema, every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Are you following me now? We've not even started the teaching of Ephesians. This is just the background. Hallelujah. Now, Adam was created having this. Say righteousness. Now, right, everybody. Righteousness is the ability to stand in the Father's presence. Righteousness is the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, without a sense of inferiority, and without a sense of condemnation. The ability to stand in the Father's presence. When you were growing up and you stole meat, when they got to know about it, you, you almost wanted to die when your father was coming back home because you've lost righteousness. That ability to stand. When your result is good, you run home. And you, you can't wait for your father to come. But when, when it's not the way you hoped for it to be, you'll be wishing that you would travel. That's righteousness. Are you listening to me? So Adam had this. Anyone who did not have this righteousness cannot relate with God. Watch this. So when man fell, I hope you realize that man did not fall by eating the fruit. Eating the fruit was the proof that he had fallen. Because death is first spiritual before physical. I hope you know Adam did not die physically yet. He lived many hundreds of years ago. Death was the natural consequence of the deterioration of the sin nature. We'll talk about that. I just want you to understand this concept first. So when man fell, watch what happened. The first thing that happened is when they ate, the Bible says their eyes were what? Open. Look up. There were two trees in the Garden of Eden. One was called what? Go and get your Sunday school book. One was called what? Some of you didn't even go to Sunday school. You were buying ice cream with or, 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 your offering and playing ball with oranges where your friends were receiving the word of the Lord. One is called the tree of life. The other is called what? Now, the tree of life, the job of the tree of life is to make you live forever in whatever state you are in. Are you listening to me? Whatever state you are in, you have to remain in, the, in that state if you eat of the tree of life. So when God created man in his image, eating of the tree of life will keep him in that state. So by reproduction, he will give birth to many children after his kind who are after the kind of God. Are you listening to me now the tree of the knowledge of good and evil exposes you to two things it opens your eyes truly to begin to be aware why good and evil adam did not know that that there was judgment upon satan he didn't know certain evils that happened before he came are you listening to me so satan did not really lie when he said you shall be like god you will know some things that have happened that there is more than you are seeing so when he came to him he when he ate and Eve ate, what happened? Their eyes. They had eaten. Listen. Everything you receive through Satan will give you these two things. Good, but with it will come a measure of evil. Knowledge of good and evil. And the whole journey from Genesis to Revelation is everybody choosing whether he will eat between the knowledge of, of the tree of life or of good and evil. Because in the book of Revelations, we see that there was a tree of life in the throne of God. The other tree had disappeared because everyone that made it must have chosen the tree of life. So there is no more tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are you following me, please? Hmm. Their eyes were opened. What happened? They suddenly realized they were naked. What covered them in the first place? Shekinah, the kabod of God. The literal glory of God. The way it covered the face of Moses, it covered the entire structure of them. So, they did not even see their nakedness, but they were naked. Are you following me now? Now, the glory lifted. And this is what they lost. Man lost three things when he fell. Number one, he lost the Holy Ghost, the breath of life. The one who will guide and instruct him. Number two, he lost righteousness. Look at this. This was lost. So, man, the soul of man, according to the tripartite nature of man, I hope you know you are a spirit, you live in a body and you have what? 
a soul. When we talk of soul, what are we talking about? It's just your spirit in the consciousness of your will, emotions, and intellect. Now, watch this, please. Man falls, all right? And suddenly he discovered, look at the manifestations of the soul. Now, his spirit died. What is death? Separation from the spirit of God. The spirit of God left man. Instantly he died. He said, in the day you eat of that tree, you shall what? Die. That means you shall be separated from my spirit. At that point, we see solical manifestations. Suddenly he was afraid. Suddenly he was timid. And they went to hide. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, and he heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. The literal Hebrew rendition is, and God and the talking spirit was walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice and I hid because I was what? Naked. He said, who told you? That means everything you know today, somebody told you. Whether it's right or wrong, somebody told you. And Adam said what? The woman. He didn't say my wife again. You see where family controversy started from? He said, the woman you gave me, this woman, I was minding my business. You came to come and produce something out of my reach. The woman. And now he said, woman, why have you done this? Then, listen, certain curses began to come. One of it was the cause of tilling the ground. He said, in your sweat shall you eat. And to the woman, he said, the travail of childbirth. Are you listening to me? And the ground was cursed. And to the serpent. I hope you know the serpent was. One day we'll talk about that. I'm not ready to say something now. You are not. Okay. No problem. When we are talking about the war. <laughs> the, the standing. I will tell you. Why is Satan interested in snakes? Have you wondered why? What is it about serpents and people? The traditional people in your village. People who have dreams and see snakes. Why not monkey? Why not? Why not? goat we will explain that because you will find out that before the snake fell the serpent was not the serpent was not crawling the way it used to crawl hallelujah we're going to study the word we'll examine a lot of controversial things for instance the bible tells us enoch the father of seth the father of Adam, the son of God, or the son of Seth, the son of Adam. Where did he leave Cain and Abel? Read your Bible. They were not among the genealogy. Ah. Then the Bible says Adam knew his wife and he gave birth to Cain. He didn't tell us he knew his wife again, meaning he slept with his wife, but we see Abel manifesting. The second time Adam will know his wife, they gave birth to Seth. And he said, on that day, men began again to call upon the name of the Lord. So were they twins? Sila. The second question is, where did Cain get his wife from? Because Cain was banished. Are you listening to me? I will make you love your Bible. And then we'll examine again what really happened. That suddenly, look at me. The Bible says, by their fruit we shall what? How come Cain and Abel, the Bible never tells us that Adam is the father of all the living. But it tells us Eve is the mother of all the living. Bible, what are you saying? Don't confuse us here. <laughs> because now we see Adam and we, I mean, we see Cain and we see Abel. Suddenly we see the manifestation of the workings of the spirit in the life of Abel. But we see the manifestation of Satan in the life of Abel. And God told him, hey. To the point that Cain will now kill his brother. And God told him, sin lieth at your door. Who taught him all these things? I thought they were the first children of, of Adam and Eve. Who taught them the concept of sin and the concept of falling? Who is the father of Cain? Who is the father of Abel? Who is really their father? Because this was the revelation Paul was trying to give the people in Romans chapter 7. He said, within me, although I came out from one womb, the womb of the word of God, I see the manifestation of two persons in me. 
He said, with my spirit, I serve God. However, I turn and I see another law walking in my members. So that the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing. And the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Then verse 8, chapter 8, verse 1 starts. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to a certain kind of people. Are you seeing the relevance? Don't think we are just bamboozing through history. No, 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 no. We are trying to check something. Because the Bible says Cain departed from the presence of God and built a city. That's where the Antichrist government started from. It started from Cain. How did this happen? Didn't Adam teach his children well? Could it be that Cain had another father? Sila. So man lost righteousness. Hallelujah. When man lost, lost righteousness, he ran away from God. Listen, from that time, I hope you realize that the law, the prophets, and all of these things were only interims. Do you know the law that the law was not part of God's original agenda for man? You know the manifestation of the prophets of old. The prophets of old played both prophetic and apostolic roles. Because one of the proof of an apostle is that you must have an encounter with the Lord Jesus directly. Paul said, am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus? Are ye not the seal of my apostleship? Are you listening to me? Now, no man had at any time seen the word. Because until then, the word had never found expression physically. He was only the word. Are you listening to me now? It was only when the Holy Spirit turned the word to become a seed and planted. The Bible says he appeared before men and they saw him. He was full of grace and truth. So until then, no man ever knew how the word looked like. His original name was not Jesus. I hope you know that. Jesus was the name he took when he, bore, when he had a body. Because when the prophet prophesied, he said, Ye shall call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a Hebrew word that means God in our midst. God with us. Jesus was never called Emmanuel once. Is it? Was he called Emmanuel in your Bible? They gave him Jesus. There are Mexicans that bear Jesus today. Jesus is simply, the Hebrew is Jehoshua. That's where you get Joshua. It means God our salvation. That's where they get Yeshua. Because they pronounce Y for J. Yeshua. That's why you see some versions, they say Hallelujah. Instead of Yah, you see J. Hallelujah or Hallelujah. Some people say Hallelujah. Are, are, you, are you learning something, please? We're examining the book of Ephesians. And there are certain foundations that you must have. So man left the presence of God. When he left the presence of God, what happened? That began what we know today as experiment. The Holy Spirit was supposed to lead man into perfection. But now man had fallen. Are you listening to me? So he had to now start using his mind. And then wickedness began to grow. And then later we are going to be studying how that the Bible says that the sons of God slept with the daughters of men. And they gave birth to certain kinds of things. They corrupted the race. Men with six fingers and six toes. Unusually big. That's where Goliath came from. So what happened? When we study, I'm going to show you from the Bible the origin of HIV AIDS. And you will know that HIV AIDS is called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. It's something that came from the interaction of the realm of the spirit and this realm. That's why when it comes into you, it attempts to change your DNA. It paralyzes your immune system. The solution is not just medicine. The solution is the power of God. This is what is, is taught in the film you know to be X-Men. That there are certain people by reason of genetic mutation acquired certain supernatural ability and then they say a war will happen one day on the earth. That's the prediction of the films you watch and they are not lying. That is the watch between the sons of light and the corrupt race. Some of the films you watch, some of the pictures and the demons that they come from, do you know they are real demons? One day, I saw the advert of a movie, and I saw a, you know, all these kind of funny films. I've seen that demon in the realm of the spirit, and they used the mask of the demon in a real film. I said, what the heck? The producers of these films are real men of the spirit. Don't you think they are just intellectuals? They say he has PhD, whatever. Uh -uh. These men go by divination and sorcery, and they have a covenant with Satan, and they come up with the pictorial representation of these demons. For instance, 
The way Michael Jackson dances is a, a, there is a, there are evil spirits that dance that exact way. It is when they inhabited him that he started doing that. It's not a lie. This is true. Ephesians chapter 1. We're out of time. The time has even gone. Don't go and sit. Maybe you want to go and sit. Okay. Go and sit. I'll use somebody else. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ. Please take on your Bible. We are reading. We're going to read. Um, this is part one. The book of Ephesians part one. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with what? Spiritual blessings. Where? Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He said, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world. So you have been chosen. That means your life. Listen, the Bible says those he predestinated those he called he justified he glorified you are not just an accident you have been planned are you listening to me something happened on the way by but by the wisdom of the spirit there was a plan of redemption to bridge the gap now god wants us to continue what would have happened if man did not fall if man did not fall what would we be doing i hope you know if man did not fall there will no there will not be apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors they came because of the fall their ministry will end one day when will it end? When the saints come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. So those who say there are no apostles again, there are no prophets, there's no need arguing. Ask yourself, has the church come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ? If not, then the ministry of apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors is still valid. Hallelujah. The apostles break the ground. They build the people. They equip the people. They evangelists by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, bring people from the fold of darkness. The pastor, the word pastor is shepherd. And that is not even a teaching title. That is an administrative title. The word pastor is the word father. So they father the people. They help them. They build them. A pastor is not just a preacher. Are you listening to me? And then there are the prophets. They reveal the oracles. They reveal the blueprint and they give direction. So the apostles receive the signals from the prophets. What is God saying? And they are the ones that have the faith and the audacity to go through it. Agabus revealed to Paul. He said, whoever has this girdle is going to Jerusalem. And he gave Paul direction. Paul said, God has already shown me. But he said, I will go. They are the ones who plow the ground. That's why he makes us stubborn before he sends us. Because Kai, the people that we are sent to are not, they are very stubborn people. Prophets are see as they can be quiet and calm, but apostles are not quiet people. Doesn't mean you should just be stubborn and say, oh, this is the secret of being an apostle. I will not obey my mother again. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> Having predestinated us into the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure. Why does the Bible use adoption? Adoption means that we belong to another kingdom before. When you adopt a child, what do you do? You take that child and engraft that child to become your own. Hallelujah. To the praise, verse 6, of the glory of his grace through which he had made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption. Listen now. In whom we have redemption. How? Through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Now look at this. The Bible says there were Hebrews and we're talking about seated with Christ. We'll discuss it in brief, maybe 10 minutes about the whole concept of redemption. What is redemption? The word redeem means to salvage, to save by paying a ransom. Hallelujah. That you salvage someone by paying a ransom. I wrote a book some years ago, Not Guilty, never released it, but it was a, an attempt to explain to man his present position in light of what Christ has done. Now, there was a contention you, when you read the book of Romans. That's where it contrasts between the law and grace, down into Galatians and Colossians and then Ephesians. It seems that Paul had a controversy because the Jews and the Gentiles had an issue. Watch this. The Jews were God's covenant nation. The Gentiles, every time I use the word Gentile, it means whoever was not a Jew. Real Jew from the nation of Israel. So we, we are called what? Gentiles. Are you listening to me? 
those who are separated from the commonwealth of Israel. Now, the Jews were a people who entered a covenant. I hope you know that. They entered a covenant with God sealed by what? Circumcision. Are you listening to me? It was a covenant with God. Because they needed to be a separate people with whom the Messiah would show up. Now, the Gentile nation, they were hidden nations. They did not love God. They served other gods. When Jesus Christ came, listen, remember that when he was sending the 12 and the 70, he told them, do not go any other place. Go to the lost ship of Israel. Are you listening to me now? Because he wanted the Jews, because the Jews had paid so much price for Jesus Christ to come. So, the Bible says a worker is worthy of his wages, and he will be the first partaker. Are you listening to me? So the Jews were to be the first partaker or uh, the partakers of salvation. But they rejected Christ. And then the blessing came to the Gentiles. That's why till today, those in Israel, if you've gone to Israel for pilgrimage, those who are leading the people and driving the cars, they are not even born again. They don't believe in the Messiah. They just know that they have a historical monument that is making money for them. Hallelujah. And so, here was the problem. The Jews were saying, we are better than every other nation. Why? Because we are a covenant people. We are circumcised and we are a covenant people. Now, the Gentiles were far. This is what the Jews were saying. This is why they rejected the gospel of Paul. Paul was saying, for all have sinned. What is all have sinned? Jews, you have broken all the commandments they've given you. Gentiles, you did not even have, you, were, you fell from Adam. That's why I said, by one man, sin entered the whole world. Are you listening to me now? The Jews were contending. They said, no, for anyone to receive of the blessings of salvation, he must become a Jew by circumcision. Then from a Jew, he will now become a partaker of God's blessing. And Paul was saying, no. He said, it's not necessary. That the only circumcision that was required was the circumcision of the heart. Hmm, help us, God. So we have redemption through his blood. Our redemption, listen to me. The word redeem means to bring somebody back to an original state by paying the price. Are you listening to me? According to God's eternal justice, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 18, it says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So according to the verdict of God's justice, when man fell, he was judged. Is that correct? In the days of Noah, the Bible makes us to understand that men began to do things that displeased God and he judged the earth with a flood and then there were eight people Noah his wife the three sons and their wives why because eight is the prophetic number for new beginning so God was beginning a new race now God knew that he would not need to keep killing people and wiping one generation after another then they had a plan and that plan was Jesus Christ are you listening to me now so the prophets came to guide the people to guide the people in the way of the Lord until the manifestation of Jesus Christ. When Jesus showed up, he showed up as the one, John said, the one who sent me told me that the one on whom I see the Holy Spirit descend, he is the Lamb of God. And when he saw him, he said, behold the Lamb of God. So everything that happened in the Old Testament was a foreshadow. A foreshadow. Are you listening to me? So Jesus comes and walks upon the earth. Jesus came for two reasons. And none of them is to take you to heaven. Listen to me. Hallelujah. The first reason Jesus came was the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile us to the Father. Do you know why we are going to heaven one day? Look at me. Do you know why we are going to heaven one day? Because Satan must be judged and the prophecies that are being written, they are called the written judgment. They must be executed upon the earth. And the Bible says, let he, that him that let it will let. That means it is the church who, who are the light of the world that are withholding the manifestation of the Antichrist. The Antichrist cannot manifest when the church is here because light shines in the darkness. So don't let anybody fool you with all of Yes, the government of, anti, of the Antichrist is already being formed. Are you listening to me? But the Antichrist cannot show up until the church leaves. The Holy Spirit will need to give way for that manifestation. So who are those who will be the missionaries? The Jews. When they see the exit of the church, truly they will know that they have been misled. Because they are waiting for the manifestation of the Son. He came in a manger and they said according to their prophecies, he's supposed to come with great chariots and horses. And so they are waiting for the manifestation, the coming of Jesus. The, <laughs> what we, well... Will I call it second coming? The second phase of the exit. 
For those of you who have been taught that there is nothing called rapture, change your mind. There is something called rapture. There is no word rapture in the Bible, just like there's no word trinity in the Bible. Every time you see a word that is used that you cannot find in the Bible, you search for scriptures to confirm it. Are you listening to me? Like trinity, Jesus comes out of the water. The Father is speaking. The Holy Ghost comes in bodily form. You see the manifestation of trinity. But that's not enough because two scriptures must confirm it. Then we see Stephen. Stephen is full of the Holy Ghost. Looks up to heaven and sees the Father sitting and the Son standing at his right hand. Now we know that there is something called trinity. So rapture, the Bible tells us in the book of Thessalonians and, and many other scriptures how that there will be a time when there will be a glorious exit of the body. Why? So that the vials, according to Revelation, will be poured upon the earth. Are you listening to me? We are the ones who are withholding wickedness. Do you know I've not even touched on Ephesians. We're just doing general Bible study. Well, wherever we can stop, we'll soon stop and then pray. But are you learning something? The word of God is supposed to make you grounded. The end of this, this is part one. In part one, we are supposed to learn who we are in Christ on account of what Christ has done. Say after me, because of what Christ has done. I am alive today. Oof, dear Lord. Okay, let's see how far we can go. Because Paul began to pray. Paul was praying a prayer to the Ephesian church that they would see what he saw. He prayed in verse, in verse 17. He says, I pray that I bow my knees for this cause. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you what? The spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in the knowledge of him. Your heart being flooded with light that you may know certain things. He says that you may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of his power and all of that which he wrought in Christ. And he said, now Christ is seated in the heavens. Okay, let's, let's, wherever, oh Lord, wherever we can stop. Let's start from, where should we start from? The Holy Communion. Let's just take it from there. I have to at least cover some grounds. The Holy Communion. What is the Holy Communion? What is the revelation of the Holy Communion? Now look up, please. By this time, it was evident that man had fallen and the only remedy is Christ. Because the, without the shedding of blood, there is what? No remission of sin. And any soul that sinned, it shall die. Is that correct? Now, man sinned. I hope you know that the concept of sin, listen, sin is first a nature before an act. Are you listening to me? So, when you see someone fornicating or doing something, the sin is not really the fornication. The fornication is the effect of that nature in the person. The strength of that nature in him. Because the Bible says, for instance, it says, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, he who knew no sin became sin. Did Jesus sleep with any woman? Did he steal any man's property? But the Bible says he became sin. So what is the Bible saying? He who knew no sin became the embodiment of sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when man fell, he took on that fallen nature, that nature of Satan. Man lost his dominion. Man lost the Holy Spirit. Man lost righteousness. And all through, from Genesis chapter 4 down to the manifestation of the sun, it was just a transition, a, a, a temporary transition awaiting the coming of Christ. So, at the Holy Communion, now Jesus had told them he was going to die. Watch this, please. He sits with 12 people because 12 is the number of government. Is that correct? And what does a government do? They represent the people. Are you listening to me? So, Jesus Christ was entering a covenant with the whole world through 12 people, using them as a prophetic point of contact so that he could now die for them. Are you listening to me? Because there had to be a way for substitution to happen. And for substitution to happen, Christ would have to take on the nature of man in death so that we would now take up his nature in life. Are you understanding me? And that's what the Holy Communion. Jesus said, except ye eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you do not have my life. Are you listening to me? Now he had said he's the bread of life and he's the cup, the living waters. So he took of the bread and broke it and gave the 12 people. The moment they ate it, there was a legal grounds in the spirit where Christ can now take the nature of man. That's why after the communion, he went straight to Gethsemane. What was he doing in Gethsemane? He was crying. No, he was not crying. That's where 
what we call the exchange began to happen. The substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Are you listening to me? Him becoming sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. This is what Paul is trying to explain. If you do not understand what Christ has done, you will not know who you are. You see why it says we are seated with Christ. Sitting symbolizes rest. Is that correct? So, everything as far as your redemption is concerned, you did not do anything. It was Christ that did everything. So, if you try to do what Christ has already done, it will be futile. You just need to embrace what Christ has done and walk in the reality of it. Are you listening to me? Now, when Jesus was at Gethsemane, listen, you know why Jesus cried and said, Father, if it be thy will, please take this cup off me. What cup was it? The cup of death on the cross? No, no, no. The cup of separation. For the first time, the Trinity were going to be separated. The Holy Spirit who came upon Jesus Christ like any man at baptism would have to leave him so that he can die. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit came back after three days and resurrected him back again from the dead. Meaning he left him. When the Bible says he gave up the ghost, he gave up his spirit, not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit left him. That was the only condition for him to pay the price that he was paying. So that cup was the cup of separation. Because listen, it was in Gethsemane Jesus began to become the Adam. I hope you know that on the cross he didn't start dying there. He finished his death on the cross. The death started in Gethsemane. Because Adam first died spiritually. Is that correct? And then he died physically. So if Jesus were to qualify and meet the condition of being the second Adam, he would have to die spiritually first. And what is spiritual death? Separation from the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost left him in Gethsemane. And then they held him. Watch this. From that time, he did not become Jesus the Christ. There was no more Christ in him. Christ comes from the word Christos. The anointed one and his anointing. He was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus sin. Me and you. The embodiment of every sinner. Are you listening to me? Now he began to pay the price that me and you would have paid. So let's have Jesus here. There's something very lovely the Catholics do. Sam, you are Jesus. They remember during Lent period, they get a Jesus and move him around. Now, watch this. Man fell. Every king has a crown on his head. Is that correct? Your crown is the symbol of your royalty. So man, when we fell, we lost that symbol of royalty. So a crown of thorn was put upon his head in substitution for the restoration of our royalty. Are you listening to me? That's why a crown of thorn was put. Everything that happened to Jesus from Gethsemane was the substitution. And so they took him. He was naked. Why? Because the first Adam lost the glory and he was naked. I hope you know that all the covering you see around Jesus was just for social reasons. He was naked. Now when they took him, this is what Isaiah saw. He said, who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He saw Jesus battered. The same Jesus that he said, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Now Isaiah in his prophecy, he was seeing in a vision and he saw Jesus disfigured. He said he was bruised beyond recognition. He said, by whose stripes we are healed. Watch this. So Jesus Christ was taken and the Roman whip. This is how they flogged people. Sam, put your hand here. Watch this so that there's no hope of touching it. It's not the way they flog people now. And when it was a way of torturing criminals, are you listening to me? The Roman whip had about 10 compartments. And at the tip of it, they used bottles and nails. It was a way to torture criminals so that they'll confess. When they flog you with that cane, you say, there's no hope of lying. Let me just tell the truth. There's, there's, there's no hope of lying. It's, it's not wisdom. Now, I want you to understand. I'm teaching you the substance. This is what Paul saw by revelation. Because he was not there when this was happening. Are you following me now? And they flogged him. Every time they flogged you, the cane will wrap around you and hook to your flesh. So when they pull it out, part of your flesh will fall. That's, why they, that's how they beat Jesus. Now, Isaiah was seeing this. And he said this was in exchange. In exchange to restore you to health because 
the soul that sins it shall die are you listening to me now when christ was suffering you were in him are you listening to me why because we took of the communion together so now whatever he's going through in the realm of the spirit we were this is what you would have gone through for your own sins but christ said let me show you love he said you just step by i will do everything for you whatever the result is i will get it so when somebody tells you ladies when he says, if not you enter well tell him just love me like jesus that's all i want <laughs> and you will see whether i can truly love like jesus do you know what jesus went through we were going to die and jesus said no you can't go through this he told the whole world he said stand come into me by covenant and let me suffer for you so that everything i'm doing you see that so satan did not know when jesus gave himself satan was out to destroy the seed of the woman because there was prophecy that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent so when jesus gave himself satan was happy and he said crucify him he did not know that there was a covenant paying the price for the whole world are you getting it now so he was happy when they were beating jesus and the life of the flesh is in the blood when man was created from the beginning there was no blood when jesus christ resurrected there was no blood and it is that bloodless life that he gave you follow me listen 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 i want to shock you i know many of you say, ah, don't deceive us okay hallelujah now jesus was beaten when he was beaten they spat on him they did everything the bible says in galatians chapter 3 christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law who are the us gentiles being made what how did he redeem us by becoming the cause according to jewish culture every man who carries a tree you know it was a tree that fell man from the beginning so christ had to now carry that tree are you listening to me it was from the foot of the tree that man solidified his fall now he lifted it to golgotha golgotha is called the place of the skull that was where adam it was where adam died the skull the place of golgotha golgotha means the place of the skull the exact same place he was going there to be the second adam are you listening to me now when he took off the cross he became the curse so that in him i was carrying my cross too are you listening to me and then while he was going to that cross he encountered a man called simon simeon of cyrene you know who Simeon of Cyrene is? He was a black man. This is why I tell you, Africa and the black race participated in the substitutionary work of Christ. That's why there is a glory that Africa will reveal before Christ comes. Yes, it's prophetic. When Christ was suffering, the Bible says that who will partake of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows. So that Simon was a black man. It's not today they started belittling the black race. And so they said, carry the cross. Now, the African continent in one man participated and helped Jesus Christ. Helped him and took that cross. And he took him to the cross. Watch this. Now Jesus is in the cross. There are two thieves, whatever they stole. They are on one side and another side. And Jesus is here. Are you listening to me? Now he stretched his hands. Listen, the death on the cross was the worst form of death. They will call everybody in the city to come and look at you. Jesus was hung naked, a 33-year-old man. The only clothing on him was the blood. Watch this. And he stood on that cross. And when they nailed him, his hands and his feet, blood was already flowing. Listen, the moment the blood touched the earth, it gave room for the atonement of our sins. Are you listening to me because man was made from the earth when that blood touched the earth when he hung upon that cross it was a substitution it was him conquering the tree and the power of the nature of satan are you listening to me and he hung there on that cross and then they pierced his side and blood and water came out meaning he died of a ruptured heart jesus hung there and while he looked at the he looked at everybody the father had turned against him because the father turns against every sinner now jesus had become a sinner and when he looked to heaven he didn't see the father looking at him again and he said eloi eloi lamak tabaksanai he said how will you turn your face now jesus had become you and me 
Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit was not there to help him. No angel was there to help him. He was alone on that cross. And then he gave up the ghost. Guess what happened? When he gave up the ghost, he had died. There was joy in hell. Why? Because the seed of the woman who was prophesied that would bruise the head of the serpent and restore man had now died. But they did not know that except a corn falls to the ground and dies. This was a prophetic mystery. It was the secret of reproduction. So Jesus sowed himself in, upon the earth. When they were burying him, it was that seed. That seed of Abraham that would be sown upon the earth. And suddenly he appeared in hell. They just saw Jesus Christ appearing in hell. And Satan said, what a mean? Why did he go to hell? Because when sinners die, they go to hell. Jesus died a sinner. He couldn't have gone to heaven. He went to the hell that we were all supposed to go to. That means there is no need for anybody today to go to hell again. Because he has tasted death once for every man. Are you getting blessed? We'll soon round up. And now, when he went to hell, the Bible says that all of the cohorts of hell were on him. Remember that all Satan wanted was to be acknowledged as one above God. Now, Christ came as the express image. And Satan told him, if you would just bow down to me, I will give you the whole world. Jesus never said, it's a lie, you don't have the whole world. Because as at that time, Satan was the... He held the keys that he collected from Adam. Are you listening to me? He held the keys. And so Jesus went. That was the key that held your destiny, your life, your breakthrough, your healing for the entire race. You couldn't have done it by yourself. And so Jesus said, don't worry. I will go and do it for you. Now when he stepped, all the demons were upon him. Because Satan said, you must bow to me by force. He said, everyone in hell bows to me. And now Jesus shows up and says, Satan, you will bow to me. You get the word that was happening here. That's why the Bible says he made a public show of them. What drama was going on in hell? Follow me. And when he, the legal claims of justice, I've explained to you the concept of justice. If somebody steals in your house and you take the person to court, what happens? If they tell the person, give him 30 lashes, as they are lashing the person, the, the pain of that person is consoling you. Are you listening to me? Is that correct? That's how, because man offended the father. It was the punishment of man that would appease him. And Jesus became that one. So for every time they were oppressed, there was a measure of justice that would appease the father's heart. That's why nobody protected Jesus until the legal claims of justice was full. And he said, all right, the father's heart is appeased. And Jesus got up and made a public show. The Bible says, you know what he made make a public show? Have you watched wrestling where the other party didn't even punch the person once? That's what happened. And then he went to Satan. Watch this. When he went to Satan, he said, give me the keys. Wood keys of Joshua Selman's life and destiny. In the book of Revelation, he said, I am he that was dead, but now I'm alive and I hold the keys. You see that? When he said that, watch this. In him, every one of us stretched our hands by covenant and said, let me have my own too. And that of my father and my mother and my brother. This is what Paul saw by revelation. Now he collected the keys. Follow me now. Psalm 24. When he, when he had the keys. No, don't open. We're out of time. When he got the keys, he was about to go out. And suddenly there was a clarion call. Lift up your heads and be ye lifted. O ye ancient doors. Hold. Hold on. Those gates were living. They were not dead. Those were the gates of hell. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell. Those gates were the gates of hell. Because no man... Listen, until that time, ever was permitted to go condemned as a sinner and then come back again into the world to come and redeem men. But here was this man. He came and there was an announcement from heaven, lift your heads. In other words, gates open up. Somebody is about to leave hell and come back again. And the gates ask a question. They said, who is this king of glory? Look at the words, king of the glory that man left. And then he said, who is this king of glory? And the voice said, the Lord. Why did he give him the attributes of a warrior? He just conquered Satan. He said, the Lord, strong and mighty. And the gates asked again, 
Lift up your, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye ancient. They had swallowed people, Nimrod, Ahaz, different people followed that gate. And he said, there is a king that entered and wants to ride back. Said, Who is this king? He said, the Lord of hosts is his name. Suddenly the gates opened and Jesus stepped in. And the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Because all this happened in the realm of the spirit. On the third day, suddenly the father said, angels, you can go. And Michael came and rolled the stone and sat and said, let me see the person who will come and roll it back. And the Holy Ghost came. Listen. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. Now listen. The physical body of Jesus had been decaying there. Are you listening? But when the Holy Ghost came, because, listen, Jesus, the spirit body of Jesus was now alive, and now they needed a quickening. If that same spirit that did whatever he did to that body now lives in you, he said the exact same way, he turned a mummy and removed every biological decomposition that same spirit and he came upon that body suddenly Jesus was comfortable to enter his body when he entered his body he got up and he stepped out when he stepped out he stepped out in glory and the, the, the disciples were hiding and he stepped in watch this he the moment he resurrected he started manifesting the character of spirit beings walked through a wall and he said all hail hmm. In other words, job done. When, when Mary saw him, she wanted to touch him. She said, Rabboni. He said, no, don't touch me. You will corrupt this thing. I have not yet ascended to my father. Why? Because he would, according to Hebrews, he would need to be the high priest. Remember that when he talks about atoning, the word atone means to cover. Now, in the Jewish culture, the, you need to atone for the sins of the people using a lamb that was one year old. And it was spotless. Now Jesus became the lamb. The problem is, or the, the advantage is that he doesn't have age. So the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement. Now Jesus became the lamb. And poured the blood from that ageless lamb. And he became the high priest again. And carried the blood. Took it to the heavenly tabernacle. Poured it once upon the mercy seat. And said, alright, priest and everybody, your error ends. We don't need you again. Suddenly, he was able to step down. And he said, guys, all hail. He says, all authority. Listen. Philippians chapter 2 happened before he came back. That was where the coronation service happened. Immediately. It was not when Jesus left in the book of Acts. No, he had become Lord. And then he came and said, all hail. All authority in heaven and on earth has now been given unto me. He said, you, now go in that authority. Are you, ex are you, are you following me now? So, how does this apply to you now? Watch this. The moment Sam comes out for altar call, watch this, please. And you confess the lordship of Jesus over your life and you believe in his substitutionary work. Not just that he died for you, but that you died in him. Say, I died in him. I was wounded in him. I paid the price in him. The moment you make that decision, what happens? This rope. Remember our good old rope again. The very righteousness of Jesus. Even if you were a drunkard. Right there. With alcohol in your stomach. Listen. You look exactly like Jesus before the Father. And now Jesus takes you as the mediator. And says, Father, behold. And the Father said, I cannot see a sinner. All I'm seeing is somebody as exact as you. We are now partakers of his divine nature. This is your present day reality in Christ. Now, demons, listen. When you catch this revelation and you activate it, the realm of the spirit will receive the signal that you know who you are. Are you listening to me? And the seal of the blood is upon you. And the proof that the deal was done is he sends the Holy Spirit to come into you whereby you cry Abba Father now you can call God my Father you are not just a stranger somewhere are you listening to me now the Holy Ghost comes what happens when he comes you are blood washed you are redeemed if Jesus Christ comes are you going to go to heaven yes you will why the proof that you go to heaven is that you have the Holy Spirit any man that does not have the Holy Spirit in him cannot go to heaven are you listening to me 
Now, what you call eternal life, look at me. Eternal life is not life after death. Eternal life is the presence of the Holy Spirit in a man. He is the life of God. The one who brings eternal life to you. And then you are sealed with the blood. So, you have been an armed robber. You have been a cheat. You have been whatever you are. This is why a lot of people cannot understand the message of righteousness. Because it looks like it's unfair. How can you say, I've, been a, I've killed people, I've done all kinds of things. The moment I come to Christ with a broken heart, suddenly I become the righteousness of God in Christ. And he looks at you, listen to what God says. He says, not guilty. Let me shock you. Do you know what not guilty means? Not guilty means you did not commit any sin. Come on God, come on God. When we say guilty but pardoned, it means you fell. Are you listening to me? And somebody has bailed you. But now God says you are not guilty. Not guilty means whoever was on the cross was the person who committed that sin. And now we see Christ on the cross. And he looks at you and says you are free. Lord, I'm free. I killed people. I drank alcohol. I did all kinds of things. He says, whatever you are saying, I cannot see you again. There is an eclipse of the blood between me and you. And anything seen through the blood is holy. That's why the Holy Spirit, the spirit of holiness comes upon you. So say, I'm the righteousness of God. Now look at this. Now this guy is born again. Watch this. Sam is born again. But he finds himself walking in a path that is ungodly. Assuming he finds himself fornicating again. And this guy loves God. He's born again. He's praying in tongues. And he finds himself. What happens? The Bible says, I write these things to you that ye sin not. He said, but if ye sin, ye have an advocate with the Father. Even Jesus the righteous. This is the hope of the believers. Listen to me. That you are the righteousness of God. And listen, listen please. I need you to get this. When a believer falls or a believer commits acts of sin, what happens? Has the person lost his salvation? No. No. There are two conditions to lose salvation. One is that you practice the sin of rebellion. What is rebellion? Willful, perpetual, continual breaking of the laws of Christ consciously. If I'm here now and I'm preaching, and I know I'm going to go and drink tomorrow, I know it's wrong, I plan it, it's in my mind. That's rebellion. Rebellion shifts you out of the covering of gra the grace of God. And outside of his grace, what you see is judgment. Are you listening to me? So God is not some perfect God who is waiting. And the moment I look at this person and I'm angry and I just slap him, hey, 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 hell no. If that's the condition, nobody will go to heaven, not even me. Look at the way I shout at you all the time. And then I'm talking of going to heaven. This is the revelation of a guilt-free life. Now, watch this. A lot of believers have carried this and said, ah, so if whatever I do, so long as my conscience is clear and I can open up my heart and be repentant before God, it means that I'm free. That means I can go and sleep around with every lady in the world and suddenly just go to God and say, Lord, you won't happen again. Please forgive me. Paul says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? But you see, you're not going to stop. When you preach and tell people, stop sinning, stop this. If they could do it, they would not do it in the first place. There is an ability that you need to tap into. Are you listening to me? It's called the redemptive grace of God. So I've been bought with a price. Satan cannot look at me and remind me of my yesterday. Therefore, if any man, therefore, if any sinner, if any smoker, if any malpractice practitioner be in Christ, what happens? He is it doesn't matter what happened in the past. Say my past is past. Say it, my past is past. So that somebody does not come and tell you when you were four years old. Sam, your mother kept money at the back of this. You carried it. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Say I'm a new creation. Say I'm a new creation. So, why do you still feed on the word of God when you are a new creation? You feed on the word of God because now you need to renew your mind. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. You will need to renew your mind and come into the experiential reality of what Christ has done. Watch this. 
That's why you can see people say, I am in Christ and I am a new creation. But what you see in their life, you still see curses. You still see curses. You see them suffering the things that they are saying, I am free from. Because it's not just confession alone. Are you listening to me? Confession must also follow an activation, walking in the truth and walking in the reality of the word. This is why we are teaching you the word. Otherwise, there will be no need. We can just stop and say there's no need to come to church again. You are in Christ. Go. And you will suffer. And as if Christ did not die for you. So we begin to teach you the principles. And you begin to receive this. The Bible says we are seated in Christ. Say I'm, I'm seated with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Rise up on your feet. Say I have been crucified with Christ. My past is past. I'm a new creation in Christ. I love the Lord. The nature of sin is broken in my life. Guilt is broken in my life. Now look at me, please. Let guilt end in your life right now. There are many of you who have done things. Every time God wants to use you, Satan reminds you. Every time he reminds you of your, few, of your past, remind him of his future. Hallelujah. We have been called. We have been redeemed. I no longer belong to Satan. I'm not going to hell. This is what it, there are many of you who are born again, but you don't have what we call the assurance of salvation. Say I'm heaven bound because I'm in Christ. I'm confident of my position. Far above principalities. Far above powers. And the Bible says, listen, he said, as he is right now, so are we in this life. As he is, who is he? A king, so I'm a king. The life that flows in him, not when he walked upon the earth, his present day reality, I have the divine nature. A life immune to sickness, a life immune to failure. That's why the Bible says, though the righteous fall seven times, there is a nature that cannot leave him there. He will surely rise again. Lift up your voice and pray. Say, I'm seated with Christ. Seated with Christ. I'm seated with Christ. Come on, pray. Christ died for me. It's over with guilt. I refuse to let the guilt of the past I am one with Christ. I am one with Christ. I am one with Christ. Hallelujah. So listen, when Satan goes to your past, he's supposed to see Jesus there on the cross. If Satan is still seeing you, it's because you don't have a revelation of what Christ has done. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, Say, I am in Christ. Say, I am in Christ. Hallelujah. We have been raised up. Listen to me. Listen, listen. You have been raised up above the king in your village, above the shrines in your village where they took your name. Are you listening to me? Above all of these things, you have been raised up. In your family, there are things that can cause men. Everybody is dull in your family. You have been raised up. Say, I have been raised up. Say it again, I've been raised up. They say nobody can become a success in your place. I've been raised up. You are the only person who went to school. I've been raised up. You need to prophesy. Go ahead and prophesy. In the realm of the spirit. I've been raised up. I've been raised up. I may be from Kodi State, but I've been raised up. I may be from Kano. I've been raised up with Christ. Raised up. Above curses, above sickness, above limitation, where Christ is today, that is my present position. I've been raised up, I've been raised up, I've been raised up, I've been raised up, raised up. Above principalities, above powers. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. We're rounding up. 
from today and for the rest of your life never allow anybody call you a failure are you listening to me stop calling yourself those names you have been raised up you have a new status a new class as he is today he has raised you this is what Ephesians tells us we are seated you may look like an non-entity but you are not ordinary say I'm not ordinary say I'm not ordinary say I'm a champion I'm a world changer yes 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 look at me look at me so when someone looks at Jimmy and says Jimmy you will be a failure no see stop crying over what people tell you there are many of you that are so word sensitive they say you are stupid no I'm not because Jesus is not say you are foolish no I'm not as he is they look at you you see a carryover on the board you say this is not my true status no 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 they look at you and say you self eh? you this girl will anybody marry you are you joking Christ lives in me see package yourself today and begin to work in this consciousness refuse it listen 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 refuse it refuse it Jesus refused to let the mindset of Nazareth follow him because he was a world changer many of you are allowing the mindset and the limitations of your family to follow you you are a young man but you are behaving as if you are 60 years every time they say you are you are always it's not for us they can't bless me when you see blessings in the world you laugh and say my village me that my accent i'm even sounding when i speak you know i come from this village what is our business with that the bible says you are being raised up when demons knock your door they can't see you you are above listen something happened Oyedeko was sitting in his parlor and he was praying in tongues armed robbers entered and they were searching they didn't see him that's why demons demons should not be able to find you I tell you you are seated with Christ you are seated with Christ you are seated with Christ I like you to just imagine Jesus sitting and then he called you and said come Come, come, be seated with me. Finally, you are going to rebuke everything. Listen, come against sickness. Mention all the things you are above. Don't keep quiet. There are some things that are making you look like what we are preaching to you is a lie. Now is the time to confront them. You confront darkness with light. Prophesy, I've been raised up. I can never be a failure in life. No, no, no. Above sickness. Above sickness. Above HIV. Above HIV. Above migraine. Above headaches. Say it. I'm above. I'm above. I'm above. God, God, so take it. Announce it in the realm of the spirit. Satan, I'm above you. I'm above demons. I'm above failure. I'm above this system. I'm above. Hallelujah. I've been called into a victorious life. I'm above. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what you are going through. Say I'm above. Say I'm above. I'm above. Go second take a book of Shupai. I've been raised up. I've been called out. I am not a sinner. Don't call me a sinner. I am not a sinner. Saved by grace. A product of the righteousness of God.
Alléluia. Alléluia. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all. Seeking you as a precious joy, not to give up, I'll be your friend. You are my own. Hallelujah. Pride. Pride. Number two, quickly. The second reason why people do not experience the outstretched arm of God in their lives is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Please listen very carefully. Ignorance and disobedience to God's principles, the systems of the kingdom. The kingdom of God and the dealings of God with man is broken into systems. Listen carefully. The system of God's dealing with man represents his modus operandi as far as certain outcomes are desired. Are we together now? It is part of the assignment of every leader in partnership, every pastor, businessman, career person, every believer in partnership with the Holy Spirit to explore the systems of God and understand the keys that he has apportioned to be responsible for certain outcomes in our lives. Please listen. Not every key opens every door. That you are holding keys does not mean the door you want will open. No, we have been given the keys of the kingdom and we must know the systems that are responsible. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. There is a system in the dealing of God with men that is responsible for longevity. There is a system that is responsible for the impartation of the life and the power of God in a man. There is a system that is responsible for wealth and prosperity. There is a system that is responsible for favor. There is a system that is responsible for defense. That when men and the powers of darkness rise against a man, there is a system a man can operate with God that can build a shield of resistance. Mysteriously, you walk out of things that should have killed you as though the devil does not exist. It is not luck. Everybody says systems. If you do not understand the systems of God, give us Ephesians chapter 4, please. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. Listen carefully. Having their understanding darkened. Then it says, being alienated, taken apart from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. When the understanding of a man is darkened, you can be alienated from the reality of God's life. So you will read it in the Bible. You will even confess it. But your life will be barren of that experience. Because there is a system. Are we together? On earth, there is a system by which men grow. Correct? From a baby to an adult, there is a system. There is a system with which a woman is able to take child and give birth. There is even a time range for it. So it is in the realm of the spirit. The ignorance of believers, not just in knowing what we want. We all know what we want. But the keys of the kingdom, designed by the wisdom of God to deliver that result. So what we do in the body of Christ largely is guesswork. We apply at random several scriptural principles that we hope will address our issues of concern. And the danger is if and when they do address that issue, we cannot reproduce it because we do not know which one exactly produced the result. So we call the blood of Jesus. We invoke the name of Jesus. We call the word. We sow seeds. We take communion. And then we do all kinds of things. We pray and then we get the result. Now the danger is we cannot teach another person. There is an exact system that is responsible for what you and I are looking for tonight hmm. are we together you heard the testimonies of some of our loved ones here look at this kind of results 
there is something responsible. The Bible says they are life to those who find them and then health to their flesh. It didn't say they are life to Christians. No. No. That understanding that because it is in the Bible, your life should experience it is deception and fallacy. Between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass is your participation engaging the systems of God accordingly. That's what is responsible for the delivery of the outcomes in our lives. I've said it here again. Satan is never afraid of the word. Read your Bible. There is no place in scripture that records that Satan is afraid of the word. Satan is afraid of your understanding. Your partnership with the word is the dread of Satan. In fact, the Bible says, speaking about the sower and the soils, it says that Satan cometh immediately and takes the word and the word does not react on him because the word in itself is barren and unprofitable. It takes the faith and the understanding of the believers to give life to the word to now be able to speak. The word of God is a bank of potentials activated through faith and your faith is the summation of your understanding proven by your steps. First your understanding, then your steps. Your understanding is evidence of your conviction. Are we together now? I've spent my life studying the systems of the kingdom and I still do. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. Please help us, let's rush tonight. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. It says the labor of the foolish weary at how many? It didn't say where is one from the group. Every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. He didn't say there is no road. He knoweth not. 60 verse 1 of Isaiah says arise, shine. Amplified says arise from the frustration and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you. He says rise to a new light. Arise shine why for your light is come not that your light is available it's always been there but the day it comes to you it has capacity to cause you to arise please hear me believers god is not a charmer he's not a magician there is always an engaging of the systems of god fear is a product of ignorance or inaccurate understanding of the systems of god the antidote to fear is not just casting the spirit away. There is the spirit of fear, but there, is, there are activities that result to fear naturally. An understanding of the systems of God. So this is what we desire. But do we know? Do you know, for instance, believers, that in the economy of God with men, there is a way that men can receive bad things that leave them. We call it restoration. We all know and we all agree that restoration is a possibility in God's dealings with man. But do you understand the system? There is an exact spiritual system that produces that outcome. Are we together now? Yes. There is a system scattered in scripture that distinguishes men and lifts them up. Listen, let me tell you something. The word of God is only profitable when we understand our roles in making the outcome happen. The word of God is only profitable when we understand our roles. The summation of what the Bible calls faith is first understanding. This is where the challenge is. Our understanding being faulty, being incomplete, being unfruitful. So it is incapable of delivering the results that we expect. And therein lies the power of darkness. Leveraging on our inaccurate understanding of the systems of God. And then we mock God. There are people who have come with several situations tonight. And within seconds, we've not been away for over a week I mean, it's, it's been a tour right from the west down to the south and here. And it's been an amazing time. Watching all the miracles and the things that have happened. You know, I have wondered. Wondered. 
just like those who receive i have wondered at how easy it is to get god's hand having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and only when our obedience is complete ignorance truly empowers satan in fact there is a class of the demonic cadre called rulers of darkness their dominion is activated whenever there is no light we must contend for accurate understanding there is no one in school to sponsor me i am alone so you say but there is a provision in the dealings of god with men where he can raise strangers he said it strangers will feed your flock keep the promise but find out the system that commits god to making it an epistle in your life here and now otherwise we will continue to mock ourselves again and again god said it but we may never see it in our lives someone listening to me here inside outside across the nations of the earth will need to realize that this is the key it's not god it is our lack of participation to produce the outcomes that we desire say amen this is the second reason why many people remain perpetually in failure and defeat let me give us something isaiah 31 is a scripture that blessed me so much and i think it will bless you verse 1 to 3 those who depend on the strength of men the strategies of men listen to what the bible says woe to them that go down to egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many it says and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not to the holy one of israel neither seek their god let's go to verse 3 verse 3 please it says now these egyptians that you claim are so formidable they are men no are we together now it says and not god and their horses are flesh there is a limit to which they can defend you it says and not spirit when the lord shall stretch out his hands listen both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is helped now this is an ancient language shall also fall down two of them shall do what if god does not help you and your destiny helper together so it is never from men i've taught you this all every good and perfect gift comes from above through men to you from god through men to you so your prayer is not to men the God of all flesh that can manipulate things according to his will from God through men to you when it becomes from men that begins the cycle of tragedy from your life anything God cannot give me let no man claim he can give me I know we say yes sir but we don't believe it it shows on our our desperation calling the attention of men you are my last hope sam if you don't pick my call i'm dead that's a man who does not know god because he said if you will not praise me it is still within my power to raise up things that should not do that god is only limited by how much we trust him his wisdom is multifaceted has the capacity to invent new formulas of communicating your breakthrough to you your assignment is to trust him enough who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean rolls to the lord of lords never never allow your appetite or your perception of the ability of men and human strategies to help you to outrun and push away the fact that you know God is faithful I know you're a businessman and I've read every business book but by and large is only a channel every good and perfect gift comes from above I know you went to school 
but let me tell you something if God does not speak a word on your behalf your certificate can be a piece of paper on this earth as sad as the recession is it has brought so many arrogant people to their knees men who think God is limited by their perceptions and whatever it is no God is mighty he's not scratching his head in heaven wondering what to do with believers his wisdom is so infinite it reinvents itself to manipulate answers to men regardless of the circumstances you are God alone from before time began you are A man tells you I will not help you you are in trouble thank him don't cry go back to God and say Lord how many men did you say are on earth six billion let your wisdom your infinite wisdom that can raise up stones stones that can raise up stones to praise and glorify him I will never trust the strategy of men above God. I love and know and fear him too much to be that foolish. That a man comes and says, look, Ejimi, tomorrow I'm going to change your life. Just because you have five billion in your account, that's a joke. Is it not until that man wakes up from the bed in the morning? Listen. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not teaching you dishonor. Remember, I've taught you the gift of men. I'm showing you the depravity, the falsehood, the waste of time that is committed in making men God. This God is a mighty God. Your trust in him puts pressure on his integrity. Pressure on his integrity. That's what brought some of you here from so far. You have put pressure on his integrity. I assure you, he will not disappoint you. Yeah. Hallelujah. All through scripture, the Bible is full of God's promises. And then attached to them are conditions that men must satisfy as a proof of their faith in God. God cannot assume you trust him. So he creates a condition so that you're activating that condition is proof of your partnership that I agree with you. It would be costly for me to take this water and then tell Pastor Ejimi, I want to force you to take No, 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 no. I can't assume he's thirsty. Are we together? So I say, Ejimi, if you are thirsty, I have given you access to this. You're picking the water is proof that one, you are thirsty, but number two, that you believe I'm not a liar. Now, if you want to come and pick this water, and the protocol stops you. It, you, have, you have obeyed, you have put pressure on my own integrity. And so I come in and I tell him, no, I instructed him. He's acting based on his trust in me. He's not acting based on rebellion. The problem is never the devil. The problem is our fear. Alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Number three, quickly. The third reason why people experience failure, defeat perpetually is demonic oppressions. Demonic oppressions. First John chapter 5 verse 19. Demonic oppressions. We live in a world that is full of demonic activities. And the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the reality that there are forces of darkness that attempt to contend with the liberty of the saints. It says, and we know that we are of God. Read on. And how many? Not Nigeria. The whole world does what? Lieth in wickedness. Like you say, my child is lying on a carpet. The whole world lies on a mystery of wickedness. The condition to be a potential victim of this 
is that you are born of a woman. The moment you arrive here, that's all. Are we together now? You know, several people say, who did I offend that all this trouble is in? All those things are, they are just cultural ways of trying to manage pain. The whole world lieth in wickedness. The moment Jesus was born as a baby, all of a sudden, when a star came at the east, Herod, the spirit of the Antichrist, began to walk in Herod and they wanted to kill Jesus. Even in heaven there was war. He said there was war in heaven. A woman, I saw a mystery in heaven. A woman was about to give birth to a child and a dragon came and stood waiting to eat the child. And the Bible says the earth fought for the woman and took the woman to a safe place. Hear me brothers and sisters. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It tells you the location in it takes faith and the operation of God's word for it to be settled in your life. It is settled in heaven. Hence the dexterity and the order in heaven. But on earth there are still forces contending with the purposes of God. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, please give it to us. Verse 12. Ephesians 6 and then verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities listen i want you to listen to my message against spiritual intelligence that message has blessed so many people i was talking with my mother jimmy today and uh, my mother almost made me cry and she said she was listening to spiritual intelligence so much and making several decisions in her life based on that spiritual intelligence will teach you not to waste your time being angry with men fighting men because every man every man is just is a physical form being manipulated by a reality from the realm of the spirit you have to know this it is never about your in-law it is never about your son it is never about your daughter no no wasting time on men will make you hate people you cannot love there is a revelation that sponsors love so even if people speak against you you know that they are not speaking of their own peter tried to rebuke jesus that you will not die on the cross he said satan get thee behind me and he said peter satan desired peter said which satan we came here together satan desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren because you will look for them too. Are we together? It says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Paul himself was not, he did not leave the church in limbo as to the reality that at every point in your life there are forces that will attempt to mock God here's a revelation God gave me recently every sickness every oppression is like a letter Satan is writing to God he uses men like the canvas and says I am making a mockery of men to prove that your word is not true are we together now so when I trust God and I still come and I'm sick and the sickness is eating me, it's not about you. Satan does not even care. He is trying to use men, the highest of God's creation, to make a statement to the heavens. That bowing down you did not do. I am now using your image to compel creation to bow down to me. And so when God finds a witness, men and women, who represent the systems of God, who represent portals that manifest the multifaceted possibilities of God in the earth, they now begin to rewrite in the lives of men. Watch this. So this lady, come darling, this lady has cancer. It's eating her up. That's a letter from Satan. It is never about the cancer. Satan does not care. He is, he is contented with the statement and the reaction of creation to him. By reason of this are we together so when she comes for a miracle service like this 
God begins to rejoice. Not because he just became powerful. Finally, an intercourse between need and supply. Listen, every time, hear me, every time God heals a man, it was not that night he planned to heal the man. He had been navigating the need and the faith of that man to the grace, the unction level it takes to produce that miracle. And when two of them collide, there must be a miracle. I've taught you something. Listen, oh, let me not go ahead of myself. I'm enjoying myself here very seriously. Listen, this lady, cancer. Now, I've prayed for her and she's not healed. That's a double message. You see that? That message, now, her faith begins to fail her. Because she's saying, but, but, I mean, does that mean my situation is different? And she goes to God, Lord, I love you. I love you. But then she begins to think. And somebody comes to say, look, there's one man somewhere. Oh, I'm advising you all this, your Jesus thing. Me too, I'm a Christian. I gave my life to Christ before you were born. I'm only telling you this. What is there to just go carry one goat? I can even give you half of the money. You see, it is a statement. Satan uses men. Their situations is like the pen. He writes a letter to heaven. Watch the ones you claim you died for. Barren of your faithfulness. Yet you study from scripture. I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken not you seed beg for bread. Then Satan comes to write a letter. That's why God is searching for men. He's not searching for men to give them titles. He's finding space in the earth through men so that the multifaceted dimensions of his possibilities can be made manifest now if this lady supernaturally gets healed like the gentleman look at the guy that 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 um that came back to life 25 people immediately 25 people because a dead body came back to life you can't deny that are we together that's a statement Brothers and sisters, tonight, my father will write another statement. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. See, God does not just write anyhow. He writes in a way that he must force you to read it. His miracles are notable. Ask Moses. He made the bush to burn in such a way Moses could not ignore it. That's the same way somebody will walk out of this meeting. And all of a sudden, doors opening, 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 opening. Hallelujah. Opening. That's the God we serve. So, when miracles are not just a proof that a man is anointed, that's the last reason for a miracle. Miracles are a message. It's a reply from God back to men and to the gates of hell. I am still faithful. The lion, the lamb, my benevolence is still in force. I am still good. My mercy endures forever. And he uses men. Sometimes, you see, in his wisdom, he just allows the devil to exhaust his knowledge. Then he comes in so cheaply and lifts a man and says, Satan, how about this? When you understand this, hear me, you will passionately pursue the presence and the power of God not for fame you are seeking to give God space there is a statement that God needs to write to principalities and powers they mock God in our lives are we together this is what happens because it's difficult brothers and sisters we are humans when your life has a track red code of perpetual failure it will test your faith. And that's when Satan comes and tries to say, where is your God? You are 39 years as a lady. You have loved God all your life. No marriage. And I'm here believing my life anyhow. I'm still married, but another man, she wants to add another marriage to me. Look at two of us. Brothers and sisters, they are not speaking on their own. It's a letter. So it is good to give God thanks in that situation. But it's best to give God thanks in victory. Are we together? Yeah. Thank you. Demonic forces. They exist. They are real. And they have made nonsense. First Thessalonians 2.18. Please let's hurry up. 
1 Thessalonians 2.18 The apostle was speaking and he opened us up to something very, very profound. I want us to read together. Ready? One to read. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, your breakthrough. But what happened? Help me, please. Once and again, your breakthrough would have come to you. Your prayers answered already. But Satan hindered us. Satan can attempt to hinder men from meeting men. Satan can attempt to hinder things from meeting men. Are we together now? It's part of the reasons why we pray. We pray because in the place of prayer we create our own climate and we command the forces of darkness. We enforce the victory of Christ and we clear the air for believers to receive the fullness of the blessings of God. The last reason, very quickly, and then we'll pray. Why do people experience limitations in their lives? They trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. This is the last reason. The last reason, I've given you four reasons. Why people remain in perpetual defeat. They trivialize and ignore for many the place of spiritual empowerment. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. We celebrate the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this place. Not just the ministry of the Spirit. As you know we are on a series in the Holy Spirit. He says finally my brethren haven't told you all these other things finally my brethren be strong in the Lord be strong in the Lord and in the power of his the word might there means his resources his resources the power that comes with his resources there are arsenals there are mysteries there are supplies of graces and possibilities that make God God. And the Bible says we should be strong in that. The power, our access to those things is what gives us strength in this kingdom. Are we together now? There are powers of darkness that will arise and contend with believers. Once and again, Psalm 66 verse 3. Psalm 66, verse 3. Let's read. One to go. Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy ways. Help me please. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Brothers and sisters, it takes power to reign in this kingdom. It takes power to reign in this wicked world. It will take power for you to rise and not compromise yet prosper. It takes power. It's more, it takes more than sincerity in a wicked and a depraved world. Are you going to bribe? No, I will stand in for truth. That means there is no promotion for you. And you can remain there for decades. Are you from so, so, so state? No, I'm not. No, you are not qualified for this position. Human sentiments. It takes power to defy the wickedness of men takes power. Hallelujah. Takes power. Takes power to build a ministry. Much more than wisdom. It takes the ability of God. He says, Rabbi, John 3 verse 1. We know that thou art a man, Nicodemus, seeing the mighty works of Jesus Christ. They criticized him in the day. But he smuggled his way to Jesus in the night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these things except God be with him. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's authorization upon a man to represent him. God's authorization. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's ability. Listen, the capacity to produce God's result, God's dimension of result 
can only be produced by his dimension of power and grace we trivialize the anointing because we have been taught that the anointing is for men of God and since I'm not being called into the fivefold ministry I do not need the anointing no brothers and sisters hear me the anointing the anointing I've said it again I want it to become a revelation in you that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the difference between a man who rises out of death and out of every challenge is the anointing a thriving ministry and a struggling one the anointing a thriving career and a struggling one the anointing the anointing will be the difference between your next level and where you are now don't trivialize it don't say it is unnecessary no the anointing is God's advantage in the life of the believer it truly is an advantage I think it was the last set of school of ministry students I was teaching them when we were doing pneumatology I was teaching them about the anointing and I said this is our wicked world people ask you who is your father he's an iron bender who is your mother she sells a car somewhere in the road no you cannot rise we are victims of the wickedness the sentiments the ethno religious biases of men in a world where people want you to bring something you need the advantage not an advantage brothers and sisters the anointing can take you where anything can take anybody the anointing others may get there because of their connections others may get there because uncle so 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 went and once you are there they ask you how did you come and then you laugh God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me is God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me that will be your testimony is God's ability is God's ability working in me the anointing will always produce supernatural results you've heard me say it if it is the Lord's doing then it must be marvelous in our eyes if it is a man's doing it is natural and logical but brothers and sisters when your result defies the natural progression there is another agency other than you when your results in any area of life listen they called Jesus they said he was casting out devils by Beelzebub he said if I use Beelzebub the prince of demons by whom do your fathers their fathers were casting out devils they fraternized with the realm of the spirit access powers higher than a human power and were producing results that statement shows that no man can do supernatural things without the assistance of a dimension higher than that which you know yes yes in this day and age brothers and sisters the world is waiting for supernatural outcomes you don't just tell somebody be healed that's arrogance without the anointing now let me show you something I've taught you this again and again but I feel like doing it let me use a thousand naira if you would permit me please look at this because so many people really do not understand the operation of the anointing I want you to learn this please by the grace of God and by the privilege of his grace I can tell you I understand the workings of the anointing I want you to pay attention and listen closely I may not boast of any other thing but I can tell you I understand how this thing works listen the anointing works like money watch this if I give you a Jimmy 1,000 naira do you know that there are many things this can buy 1,000 naira can buy this but 1,000 naira cannot buy a car are we together now so when if your desire is to buy a car you need multiples of 1,000 it is good that you have 1,000 but it is not sufficient to draw to your life the result this is how the anointing is don't say I'm anointed it must be to the level that is capable 
I told this thing is energy. Physics defines power as work done per unit time. That's the definition of the anointing. God's ability that is dissipated per unit time to produce supernatural results. That's the anointing. Listen, if I try to lift this, it doesn't mean I don't have energy. It means the energy dissipated per unit time is small. So I need another agency to assist me. Is that true, believers? This is how it is. So it is not that the name of Jesus is there, it's not working. It is not that the anointing is not working. The situation that you are confronted with, this is why grace and peace is multiplied. Because there are situations that defy that current level. So he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Why is it multiplied? How God anointed Jesus, Acts 10, 30. Look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Let me show you how to be a blessing. When you contend with the Spirit to carry a dimension of grace and unction sufficient to solve most, if not all, the problems that you will find. This is how you will be a blessing. If Dan Gote comes here now and decides to give everybody one, one million, how, do you, how many of you know that's not a prayer point for him? Because it is within his capacity. Are we together? If Koinonia decides to give everybody here one, one million, we'll have a problem somewhere. Correct? Not because we don't have money. It is the limit of our capacity. So it's not when, when this guy has a problem. It's like a shop. There is a dimension of anointing required to solve it. So when you come to help him, it's not just that you laid hands. He may even fall down. But the money is short. What do you need? More. More. More of the same thing. Not more of a different thing. More of what? The same thing. So Benihim can climb the stage and he's not even held the mic and 40 people rise out of the wheelchair. You see, that's... The anointing upon his life makes him see clearer the might and the possibilities of God. When you are not heavily anointed, you create a wrong picture of God because you struggle for little results and it looks like that's how much God tried to release that result. But watch another man who comes with grace and unction and you watch ease as a testimony. It's called capacity. The anointing makes God look limitless. In the affairs of men this is why regardless of the results here and there that God produces we still remain in the secret place because there is no brothers and sisters there are people scattered here tonight if I ask everybody to come and hold the mic people will not travel from end to end there are people following from over 45 nations of the world they are not sitting down and wasting their time no no, people want solutions. Now a man of God gets up here called Joshua Selma. I would be a wicked man if I have not stayed with God sufficient enough, at least at the level of the growth, to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit. That's why we cry for his mercy. Because there are many situations that we need results beyond our current levels of dealings with God. And we need the mercy of God to superimpose the current level of grace that we carry. That's why sometimes I tell you that God does not heal people just through a man's faith. He switches to the covenant that that man has with him. And it becomes a platform upon which he reaches men. Are we together? Tonight... Let me tell you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that there is grace to cause your mountains to look like valleys. Yes, yes. It doesn't take time. It only takes time when an insufficient dimension of the anointing presents it. Learn this about the anointing. The anointing can greatly misrepresent God. It's like a television that is not well tuned. It will make you think the producers were that poor until you take the same video to a clearer HD television. And that's when you watch the artistry of those people. The anointing can misrepresent the capacity of God. Hallelujah. I take time to teach like this. 
because the miracles and all this will not take time once your heart is aligned to receive then you will receive miracles upon miracles are we together this is how he gets glory when he finds men who are heavily anointed please hear me never be caught up by the results you currently have now no matter how great i tell you you ask the lord my work with god is as if i don't have an iota of his anointing in my life there is a standard and there is a capacity that i'm working with god and i seek to get i have seen them in dreams and visions and i did not see this current level we are trusting god for levels where before koinonia starts before the first prayer point half of the people who come sick are already healed completely one woman one of our mothers i met a new mother new wonderful mother in portacourt lovely people those of you from portacourt i know they are listening to me now they are following me lovely lovely woman i love you with all my heart and um, the whole family i mean they are just into this ministry with their heart she donated her car and everything for them to use for the program and she shared a testimony i think it was yesterday that touched me she had been having some kind of respiratory problems and so when they picked me from the airport her children insisted that she would sit down at that same place and that woman said she just sat down and the children drove her home brothers and sisters that was the end of it now listen listen when you understand the anointing there is something interesting about it when you understand the anointing and you are heavily anointed the more heavy you are anointed the will your will plays really little role in its release it becomes wherever ask the woman with the issue of blood jesus did not even listen now he was not planning she just touched him and jesus said who touched me the anointing didn't say jesus can i flow no so you can be in a restaurant you are eating and all of a sudden now you will never believe what i'm saying if you are casually anointed if you truly are anointed you become a blessing you greet somebody just shake his hand and that day he has more customers than he can ever imagine now even you you do not know till he tells you an effulgence of spiritual possibilities you your life has become a gateway and a portal revealing a dimension of possibility that is not affordable to the natural man i welcome you tonight to this place where god has chosen by his spirit to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his grace and glory. Please rise up on your feet. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I want you to just pray two prayer points from the depth of your heart. Number one, I like you to insist and say, Lord, I release my faith. There is no challenge I came here with tonight that will return back. Go ahead and pray. Prophesy, declare it. I wave every captivity goodbye. Jesus is Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hala prakato sete katapanda shabrakadabala. Shikete paratos kapratas kalabasya. Pray. I believe in the mighty God. Dera na 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 shela na. Shikadabala kataprakato sekete. Shepres kete shalabanda katai. 
I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It's a realm of your glory. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, ta da da ta da da One last prayer point. Father, take me to a new dimension. There is always more. Lift your voice and pray. Take me to a new dimension. Take me to a new dimension. Are you praying? Take me to a new level. Let me not need to tell people that I came before your presence. Let there be an evidence. Let there be a testimony. Nina Ka. be the same. I want to pray for you. Listen. I want you to trust God. Please hear me, especially for the visitors here. I want you to trust God that the forces and the yokes that stand between you and your destiny, you have to believe that they will live now. Are we together? I want you to believe God. There are people already receiving their deliverances and miracles. I want to pray for you now. My heart is heavy because in this season and in this time, God wants to set people free. Some of you may not know the causes of the situations, the challenges, the things you go through. You are prayed, you are fasted. God has brought you here tonight and he will give you a dramatic miracle. Are we together now? 
Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, the presence of God is Listen, I want to pray for you. I see a writing. I just see a writing in the realm of the spirit and I see great breakthrough. This is what I see. Great breakthrough. There is a grace that is coming on people now. The Lord is starting off with us tonight bringing strange breakthrough to people. I want to pray now at the count of three in the name that is above all names. I decree and declare in the name of the Lord God whose I am right now at the count of three i release that grace i command every devil standing on the way to anyone's breakthrough i command that you leave right now in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus one two three go now go now bring them out Hallelujah. Lift your hands, my God. I still see these breakthroughs. I'm seeing doors opening in the realm of the spirit. Listen, I'm seeing at least 17 people. 17 people I'm going to pray. And the power of God will come upon you. Strange doors opening right now in the name of Jesus. I declare by the count of three. One, two, three. Open now. Open now, I command it. I declare it now. Now, open doors by the Spirit of God. Open doors, open doors. Satan Seketa, my God, doors opening over lives, opening over destinies, opening by the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. Mighty angelic activities and overflow one, overflow one, mighty angelic activities. I see massive deliverances coming upon men and women. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare it. Please lift your hands and pray. The Lord is showing me people here with strange delays. You love God, but strange delays. I'm seeing like arrows in the spirit. And this is not from darkness. It will come upon you. Once it comes upon you, know that that delay will end. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. As I stretch my hands right now, 
in the name of Jesus, Lord, where are they? Men and women who have been delayed, strangely, right now, right now, right now, I command that light and power, that light and power, ending delays now. Mighty in this place, mighty in this place, you are mighty. Mighty in this place, you are mighty in our I'm seeing something strange in the spirit coming upon sisters. I'm seeing a strange grace for speed. Just sisters, sisters, I'm seeing this. And the Lord is asking me to prophesy it. As soon as I prophesy it, there is a strange unction coming on ladies for strange speed. I see this in the realm of the spirit. Now, Lord, I place the word of God upon this prophecy. And I declare, ladies, step into speed now. Supernatural speed. Run like Elijah. I command it. I decree it. In the name of Jesus. Strength speed. Strength speed. Strength speed. It's coming on you now. Like the dew of heaven. Coming on you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes to a vision now, and I'm seeing keys being given to people. Keys, listen, keys. It will come on you like fire. I see keys. These keys are solutions and strategies. Solutions and strategies. Solutions and strategies. You will help me shout that name Jesus again. I see keys being handed over to people according to the grace and mercy of God. Now Lord, I pray that even as you have shown me, whoever should be a recipient of this spiritual blessing, I decree and declare that it will come upon their lives now. Are you ready? At the count of three. Get ready now, my God, my God, my God. One, two, three. Take this kiss. Take this kiss. So break your tail. for you but let me just do what the Lord is asking me to do I've told you many of you wonder when you see me do this particular thing where I just mention a state and the Lord begins to touch people from that state it's a sign and wonder you see these things they are operations of the spirit because the Lord is opening my eyes right now I'm seeing a map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God on south 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 that entire region now now, all those who come from that region, south, 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 the miracle. Now, but don't shake it.
every hand in delay from the south south I see the hand of God strong upon men and women strong upon men and women ending captivities by the spirit of the living God Hallelujah. There is somebody in overflow too. You are holding a picture. You are holding photos. Please come. Overflow too by the roadside. Let the person come. Let the person come quickly. You are holding a picture. The Lord is showing me someone. Please let, let that person, whoever he is or she is, please quickly. You are holding a picture. Run. Come. You are wearing like blue. Uh, is it blue or black now? Who is that? Come. Holy, holy. Don't worry, Mama. I'm going to pray for you. Where is your daughter, Ma? No mic. I'm looking at you. Hold on. Is this her? Yes, I'm looking at you. And the Holy Spirit is taking me. And I'm in Kano. Where is she? She's at Kano. Where is she? That's what I'm saying. She's at Kano. And the Lord, why, why, why are you holding her picture? Have the, up to now she have never get, get married. Uh -uh. And this, this day is, she's sick. This is what I'm saying. This is what God wants to destroy because I'm seeing her in Kano and you are standing in for her. Yes. I'm supposed to pray for those outside, but I saw this and the Lord is saying I should minister to you. Go and tell her that the Lord brings her life. This sickness is over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sir. Where are you coming from? Me now, Niger State. Niger State. Yes, yes. Thank the Lord because your car would have had an accident on the way coming. And the Lord has brought you deliverance. Is this your family? Yes, sir. This is your family. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four. How many children? Four children. Have you stopped giving birth? Do you think this is all? I'm looking in a vision and I'm seeing one more, a baby girl. After this, hold my hand, sir. But the Lord is going to. I'm seeing you have serious problem with finances. Very serious. You are not a lazy man. Even you, you cannot explain how you got into this kind of trouble. But I want to pray for you because the Lord is saying I shall release you from this. Hold my hand, sir. I bring you life in the name of Jesus Christ. You will go back and return with a strange. This man's life will change like day and night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, please come. I don't know this woman, but I'm asked to pray for you. I look at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing two hands like this. You're a woman of prayer. This is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Look at me, ma. You love God sincerely, but many things are going around. They are scattered in your life. And you have been asking, can God come? Can God step in? Even when you were there, you were praying that prayer. I heard you praying and the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's giving you rest today. He's giving you supernatural rest. Madam, please stand up. Please stand up, ma'am. Please stand up. Where are you coming from, madam? It's from Sabongari. You are coming. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, your life will turn around and that of your family. This is by the Spirit of God, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have I prayed for you, darling? Come. In the name of Jesus, I end captivity from your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I end captivity. Don't worry. I mustn't speak to you. As I lay my hands on you, I want to believe there's someone you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now that is sir can i pray for you sir i'm going to pray for you and the lord is going to give you peace and the lord is going to raise people to help you now sincerely speaking i want to be honest with you it is not within my power to stop you from getting married i we generally can only advise because you see, let me teach you something, especially as a pastor. There are people who are following us from 45 nations of the world. 
and when you are ministering sensitive things like this um, they are listening and every territory has laws are we together now things are a bit flexible in Nigeria but if I were in America and I'm talking to this man like this and saying don't marry another wife the son can go and sue me or the ministry so this is the reason why it's not maybe lack of faith are we together sir it is not within my power and I have no right to judge you I can only declare the counsel of God and pray for you um, this is very important when you are speaking to people although by the spirit it is important to be wise in your communication so that you do not say things that will bring you serious problem mama you are praying and you are still telling God there is one more thing you want to tell me I'm hearing your prayers come what is it give her the mic is that true you are standing there and you are praying and you are saying you wish that I can call you again there is one more issue what is the issue Marriage, your daughter's marriage um, mama let's let's pray if that is the issue you are a good woman i want to pray for your daughters and god said that's not what you need hold it what you need is destiny help us mama as i'm looking at you now they're about to throw you out of the house because your rent has expired give her the mic is that true yes sir. you need somebody to help you yes sir. seriously yes, if sir. not the time will come even what to eat will become an issue the lord said i should tell you forget this issue of marriage hmm? the major issue is the ministry of destiny help us Amen. lord send people Amen. you see we must pray that god will grant us grace so that we can help our mothers it's a terrible thing for a woman at this age to be praying as if she never had a child as if she never trained anybody that's why we cause the spirit of delay that makes people to be established very late now according to scripture a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children but sadly being as the situation is we must be able to turn back and be a blessing to these our loved ones a woman like this at her age should not be going around trying to look for food to eat again I pray that your loved ones will not look for food to eat that God himself will empower you and establish you and send you help mama don't cry in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord will help you by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus see me after the service madam in Jesus name thank you I pray for you sir in the name of Jesus may the Lord change your life change your situation right now in the name of Jesus you are the one with the child please come we are going to pray for the sick now very quickly what's wrong with him he's, he's running temperature this evening just this evening yes sir but he has been having persistent cough cough Coffee. let's pray for him Lord Jesus I pray for this your dear son by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I decree and declare that this boy be made whole right now and for you, his mother, I command that everything the devil wants to put in your stomach, let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Please, why are they here? Mama, come. Please stand up. The Lord is visiting you. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's taking away reproach and pain from your life this is what he's saying please stand up please stand up man that he's rolling away reproach you see as god speaks to one person he's only using one person as a point of contact to speak to everyone it doesn't mean that we have to call you the time will not let that happen are we together now for instance madam are you from kaduna who is from kaduna uh -uh, uh -uh, not just a person a woman there is a mama from Kaduna that I want to speak to now. This is a young lady now. I, I, a, a mama, like elderly woman. There's a woman who came here from Kaduna. Not a young lady, please. I, I want to just speak to that person very quickly. Mommy, look at me. You have gone through so much pain. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, it's your children that will wipe your tears. It's your children that will wipe your tears. May the Lord raise them and may they wipe your tears. I pray for you in Jesus' name. Why is she here? 
you are the deeper life um, lady you are, you are a member of deeper life are you sure hold my hands lord jesus i pray that you do a miracle in her life right now put your hand on your stomach god is taking something away from your stomach now i curse it something is leaving you now as i hold your hands you are even surprised even you you would not have known that there's something here i'm seeing like a malignant growth something that will later develop to a fibroid i curse it by the god of heaven right now in the name of jesus christ let it be over now in jesus name come my brother you are james i will pray for all of you but you love jesus you love jesus i have to pray for you come what's your name your name is james do you love jesus I prayed for one boy, one miracle service. Very bad friends. And I'm still seeing it again. I don't know where that guy is. And the Lord is asking that we pray for him again. You see, all these gentlemen, you have to be careful. It's important for us to be serious with God so that you don't land yourself in the police station. Hold my hands. I pray for you. The Lord is bringing restoration to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural restoration, sir. I pray for you. You will not, I don't know what is making. I'm seeing a thermometer up and down your chest. And the Lord is saying I should rebuke anything that has to do with your blood pressure. In Jesus' name, I command that it leaves you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for all of you. Come, sir. Let me just make contact with you very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hasana. Hasana, we are going to pray for the sick now. We have to be very fast. Hasana. Hasana, I'm seeing someone with the name Hasana. Is there someone like that? Please, very quickly. Hasana, whether you are inside, outside. Hasana, from Kogi State. Hasana. Are you not Sado's sister? Is your name Hasana? You are sure? Look at me. The Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration. The Lord is saying I should stretch my hands on you. In the name of Jesus, may you be a benefactor of the mercy of God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy. Yes, it's all right if your names are Hasana. The mercy of the living God. Your name too? name is Hassan. Come. I'm interested in what I'm seeing. Hold my hands, my dear. The Lord is bringing breakthrough to your family. There is a spirit that oppresses you and it must leave you now. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus, I curse you by the God of heaven. Let her go. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's afraid already. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This lady, you see, she's smiling, but there is a serious case. There is a very mad, wild spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a reason why I ask her to hold my hands. This lady has been tormented and oppressed in a way that you cannot imagine. Now I command that spirit. This is koinonia. I curse you by the God of heaven. Be gone now. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You would see a gentle lady like this. And she would not know what is responsible for her life. This doesn't mean she's a devil. It doesn't mean she's possessed. No. It's just the advantage that Satan takes over the lives of people. I command in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what is wrong with this lady is not a little issue. This thing doesn't show on the face, so you just see people smiling, but they are victims of a lot of things. Let me pray for you, my dear. Come, hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you life now. Life, come. The devil wants to bring pain to your life. Hold my hands. I command it to come to an end now. Pain repeated cycles of tragedies I curse it by the God of heaven an anointing is coming upon you and the Lord himself is giving you a supernatural miracle right now 
there are three ladies I just had the cry of children and there are three ladies you are standing in for your families now as I'm speaking the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them standing in for their families standing in for their families standing in for their families let the oppression in your family end now this girl's family has gone through all kinds of things this is koinonia i bring you the life and power that is in the name of jesus now this is what we're going to do please listen very carefully um you know that we take out time to minister more specifically to people i wish that we had all the time but we have to work with time and um we're going to pray for the sick now please listen whether you are inside or outside if you are trusting God listen please whether you are inside or outside aside from these particular cases if you are trusting God for fruitfulness for your loved one or any other person whether you are inside or outside please don't come in at random I want you to come in I want to minister to you myself aside from that now we're going to pray for the sick overflow one please all of you should walk to the front of your projector you'll be ministered to overflow two and the ones extension of overflow four please walk to the projector stand outside overflow three walk to your projector stand outside very quickly and those inside here i want you to just walk out to me very quickly we're going to minister to people in that order there are so many people it has pleased the lord to make this place a place of supernatural miracles please it, it doesn't matter where you stand if you're outside don't come in just move to your projector outside hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord we're going to minister to you now it'll be very fast whilst we're doing that please your prayer request if you've not written your prayer request or that of your loved ones those online you're yet to write do that quickly so that the ushers can follow and then we'll do that very quickly every other thing from here will now be the prophetic declarations there are so many people inside and outside we are going to pray for the sick the Lord has given us the grace He's given us the capacity there are people going through all kinds of things and um, in as much as we teach you how to live in health and wholeness we cannot allow the devil buffet you some of you are standing in for your loved ones some of you are standing here with incurable diseases HIV You've heard the testimonies. There is nothing that has not been healed in this house. Sir, the Lord is going to heal you. You will not die. That virus will not kill you. You hear what I'm saying? I don't mean to embarrass you. I hope you are not embarrassed. Because I look at you. If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing very soon, this thing will eat you up. I don't have to say more than that. But you know what I'm talking about. There is no virus. There is no situation that has not been healed in this place. And you know, we don't announce miracles if they are not medically verified so that it doesn't look like people are just faking things so believe the lord especially if you are here for the first time it doesn't matter who ministers to you i just want you to believe there is a corporate grace that is at work here to minister and bring miracles to people we'll be very fast please those outside you'll be very fast uh pastor jimmy let's see um you handle overflow one outside um, Pastor Alpha, Overflow 2, um, Pastor Femi, let's see, Pastor Femi and Promise go to Overflow 3, Mike, you walk with a Jimmy outside there, and then, um, have I told you where to go to? Okay, so, we'll would go in that order, I'm sure that, I may mean, just walk alone here, there are a number of people who are not here, we give those opportunities because it's also, an opportunity to train and build people please quickly let's go father we agree that the corporate grace you have released upon this house and this family for miracles let it be released regardless of who ministers we minister in the name of jesus we bring that name that is above all names over every situation let your anointing speak this is the moment oh god where you cure the incurable this is the moment where you step into the lives of people let it be a quick walk let everyone here return with testimonies in jesus name i'm going to begin to minister to you but there's one person here the anointing of the spirit will come upon you so strongly that will be the signal of the grace 
to minister here right now. This is, uh, don't, don't mind me, I do all my crazy things. Um, let's just walk by the Spirit. Someone here in front, the anointing of the Spirit will come on you in such a mighty way. The moment that happens, then I begin to pray for the sick now. Thank you, Jesus, for your mighty power. That's the person down there, so I can pray for you now. Bless you. Father, thank you. All right, guys, let's give God the very best. Please, you can sit down. You can sit down. While you are sitting, let's be praying because as soon as I'm done praying for the sick, we'll address other issues very quickly so that we can finish on time. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Please help them, whether you are Osha or not. New levels. There are people God is fishing out here, new dimensions. Shebros kaparu shabradi salat. Shebros katabrandega deko shalabradi asha. Engreto susa brigatia. It's a call to your spirit man. It's a call to your spirit man. This is not for everybody. It's a call to your spirit man. If it's your call, you will hear it. 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 You must hear it. If it's your call, you will hear it. Your spirit will pick the signals of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy is upon that man. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. No one. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one not a ritual it's not a ritual no but listen brothers and sisters we bring this prayer request before the God of heaven representing the pain of people representing the mockery of darkness and you've seen all sorts of miracles that has come from here and we're going to pray now the Lord is asking me to take off my shoes we are going to pray right now please I want you to participate I take time to explain this so that we all understand um, I may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but this is a representation of the cry and the request of people the other people are ministering to those outside don't worry those outside if they are still ministering to you just hang on those who um, have been ministered to already please just follow your screen can we stretch our hands in one minute and i'd like you to just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit 
to the God of heaven who answers prayers Jesus Jesus the son of the living God now arise O Lord come to your resting place brood upon these requests let there be mighty 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 miracles mighty miracles Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every request here represented tonight is turned into a testimony it's turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus the son of the living God every request here no matter how impossible is turned into strange and speedy testimonies in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that for every request you have written here and all the ones online I release my faith and in the name of Jesus I declare let this be the last time you will submit this request the last time you will submit this request let this be the last time you will submit this request Unto him that answers prayers, the one who has beckoned on us to approach his throne without fear, to approach with boldness and confidence, we decree and declare in the name of Jesus, Most High, the Son of the Living God, every request here I say again is turned into a testimony. In the name of Jesus, turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony hallelujah this is the last phase of the meeting I want to pray and prophesy upon your life it will never tire me to say this in my opinion the greatest part of this service is what is about to happen now because Believers are used to charismatism, falling down, rolling, and so on and so forth. We many times downplay the place of prophecy. Prophecy is very powerful. And I've taught us that there are two dimensions to the operation of the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that God allows by his spirit to bring comfort, to bring access to light and information that works hand in hand with the gift of the word of knowledge but the greater and more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of prophecy where the word of God makes realities that have no business happening to happen the word creates a scene and adds it to the pages of your life so that something you had no business walking in you will all of a sudden find yourself walking in it and remember I told us the last discussion before we began to pray 
that one of the greatest reasons why people are limited is because of inadequate dimension of the anointing so alongside this prayer i'm going to be praying a prayer of impartation there are people th this thing is not just for showmanship listen if you know god and you love him and you see the needs of people you will covet the unction and the grace of god this has nothing to do with showmanship when people begin to make showmanship out of it is is inaccurately used hallelujah let's correct things now let's recreate things now please lift your hands i want to pray for you oh come oh come me man and run some captivities why yeah Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and grant some captivity, Israel. Rejoice, rejoice for Emmanuel. has come to us his Israel in the name that is above all names I decree and declare right now every door that has been closed over anyone here in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command that door be opened now Bible says have you heard of this saying that a city gives birth in one day but he said as soon as Zion travails he says she shall give birth to son I decree and declare whatever you have been incubating for a long time revealed to you by the spirit but yet to manifest there is grace for performance and I command that you must have a manifestation now I decree it I declare it by the power of the Holy Ghost Manifested blessings, manifested miracles. Hallelujah. I decree and declare where you have to struggle for everything, labor for everything, I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings. I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know who has despised the grace of God upon your life. He said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I prophesy to you, may an unction come upon your life tonight that will distinguish you. I decree it, I declare it. May an unction come upon your life tonight that distinguishes you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Elijah told Ahab, saddle your ass and run, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And Ahab was already light years ahead of Elijah. But the Bible says, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And all of a sudden, he started running on barefoot. Listen, the Bible says that the disciples were six hours ahead of Jesus, moving on their boat. And Jesus got up and started walking on water. There are many of you, there are several things that have limited your pace. I want to prophesy speed for you. There is a grace that makes men to pursue, to overtake, to recover. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. As I pray for you, the anointing of God will come on some of you and you will want to run physically. Please hold them. I release that grace, that grace for speed. Receive that grace now. Speed, speed, speed. Shekoto Sodo Balata. No delay. I command speed. Speed of accomplishment. Speed of accomplishment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Isaiah 6 says, Arise, shine, 
for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise verse 3 says Gentiles you will look for them again Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising it says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I decree and declare from today every gift you have every dream every ability that is dormant and not being blessed and rewarded I command Gentiles to come to your light now I command Gentiles to come to your light, to come to your business, to come to your profession, to come to your ministry. I make it so by the Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. And David said, is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And they went to bring a crippled man called Mephibosheth. And when he came, he sat down with David and he says, you will continue to dine with me here. In the name of Jesus, where your strength cannot take you. Zatoska Pratikata. Lebredo Zosi Paratoska Priyatakata where your current level of achievement cannot take you i decree and declare may the hand of god that picks a man from a dunghill to a place of prominence may that hand pick you to the next level of your life may that hand pick you to the next level of your life hallelujah it says and i will restore to you the years alas master for it was borrowed they borrowed an axe head and it fell double trouble and he said no don't worry where fell it i want to speak to people here who have lost things you have lost relationships you have lost money you have lost opportunities there is a system in the kingdom where they can call back things he said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore in the name of jesus by the name of he who can manipulate time and make yesterday become tomorrow and tomorrow become yesterday i command a restoration now i command a restoration now i command Hear me anyone here called jobless you are looking for a job or any of your loved ones in the parable that Jesus gave he saw some people sitting idle he said why sitest thou idle he said no man employ us and he said go to the vineyard when he speaks there is always a job in the name of Jesus I create a space for you now in the name of the Lord Jesus I create a space for you now I speak anyone here or anyone standing for any family that has had delay especially in the area of fruitfulness he said be fruitful the first command he gave man right now in the name of Jesus hear me Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man he didn't say Joseph will come he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore i prophesy everything that represents unfruitfulness it dies now in the name of jesus it dies now in the name of jesus i speak to everyone God's body. carry your children now carry your children now every aspect of your life that represents barrenness be it in the works of your hands, be it in your finances. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I command supernatural results. Supernatural results. Supernatural results. I pray for those who wrote jam and didn't like their results. I change the result now. 
Hallelujah. Every family here that has refused to move forward, I don't care for what reason, in the name that is above all names, your accomplishment for the next one month will dwarf what you have done in the last five years. In the name of Jesus, believe it, help them please. Hallelujah. This is one of my favorite blessings to people. The ministry of destiny help us. I discovered, brothers and sisters, hear me, that it always flows from God through men. Everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. There are needless battles, needless battles that relationships can solve. The distance between you and the next testimony may just be a relationship but you see no destiny helper comes by his by himself they are called they are called they never come by themselves they do not even know he says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon in the name of Jesus whoever must speak for you in high places in this season Whoever must endorse the testimony of God upon your life as a man of God, as a businessman, whoever must advocate for you where your voice cannot reach, I prophesy to the north, I prophesy to the south, I prophesy to the east and west, wherever your destiny helpers are, I command them to come into your life now. Hallelujah. Listen, I know a woman years ago when we held our crusade in 2009 in Abuja, it was her camp that we used. She's not even educated, but she had access to two people, a very wealthy family that needed a miracle. And she prayed for them and they became destiny helpers. Let me tell you something. The easiest way to be wealthy is through relationships somebody can get up by the spirit and make you a partaker of his blessings are we together now we've discussed on finances and all the principles but brothers and sisters there is a dimension of speed that God can give a man and this is to help you be established fast so that you can focus on the purposes of the kingdom there is this spirit that makes people to be established so late it's not that they are lazy you cannot be established over 100,000 per month. Believe me. You cannot be established over 50,000 per month. You are too generous to even keep that money. And whilst you give, God will orchestrate men, but we have learned that Satan can hinder them. And pray specifically for finances. I want to invoke the mystery of divine supply. There is such a reality like supernatural provision. This ministry is a, is a tearsome testimony of what happens when men covenant with themselves to make sure you rise. He said men came to David in the cave of Adullam, entered a covenant with themselves that they must make him king. You don't need plenty of people. You just need one person anointed and directed wherever your financial helper is. In the name that is above all names, I declare that between now and the next two weeks of June, may they appear in your life. Hallelujah. Every dying business here, every dying career, every dying ministry that is as though you are not called, I give life to that which is dying now. I give life to that which is dying now. Hallelujah. Father, it is my prayer from my heart for your people that by miracle service, June, you will return here 10 times better. Literally, 10 times better. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to release something. There are people here you love God 
I gave you an example of this anointing. There needs to be an upgrade. You see, the thing with the anointing is, if it is there, it is there. If it is not there, it is not there. It's as simple as that. The anointing is a very obvious quality of God. It's not something you struggle to see. There are many of us, especially pastors, who are trusting God for certain dimensions of grace. It can manifest as anything. Wisdom, strategies, supernatural grace, the grace for performance. I want to pray for you. Activations are very necessary to drive people into great results. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, every dimension of the anointing that is available in this house, every dimension from prophetic dimensions, Jabo Sikata, there are people receiving it now. There are others is being activated. Others is being multiplied. In the name of Jesus, I open you up now. Strange levels of the prophetic. Strange levels. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. The impulses of the spirit. I pray right now. The manifestation of the spirit of revelation. Receive it right now. Revelation inside, inside, inside. Take it now. Take it now. Revelation, revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Every operation of the gift of the spirit that is barren in your life and needed for your destiny. I stretch my hands and I activate it now. Receive it right now. I activate it now. I activate it now. I activate it now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I release upon you right now fresh mantle for leadership. Supernatural dimension of the leadership grace. Let it come upon you. You may be weak, but it will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that giveth thee power. Brothers and sisters, there is such a thing called the power, the anointing, the unction, the capacity to create an atmosphere around you that attracts wealth. I don't know how many people it will please the Lord to release this grace, but I stretch my hands. Let it please the God of heaven to bring men into this dimension. Right now, receive it now. The power to prosper. The power to prosper. You may be weak, but the power to prosper. Bring in favor, the ministry of men into your life. Hallelujah. I don't know what has brought your prayer life down, but right now in the name of Jesus, fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Capacity to pray in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Whoever fights you goes down instantly. I say it again. Whoever fights you, whether in the secret or the open, goes down instantly. It says, you shall call on Aaron and his sons. He say, and you shall take your honor and give it. Honor is a mantle. It's transferable. Let me tell you, this thing called honor, it's not about accomplishment. There is a grace that makes people distinguished. I pray for you from today. That grace for honor, I release it upon your life. May you be honored at the gates of your destiny. May you be strangely honored at the gates of your destiny. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to move forward, tonight may their prayers be answered. Yes. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. I pray for your family. We believe in family in this place. No matter how lifted you are, if your family is not lifted, he said, as for me and my house, 
we believe in family we pray for our children whether in the womb or born we pray i prophesy over every family here that the devil is trying to corrupt the testimony of god's faithfulness tonight in the name of jesus supernatural lifting for every family 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 and finally i pray for you in a way you have never seen whoever looks at your face i compel them to favor you listen the bible says esther found favor on everyone that looked at her for as long as you made contact with esther and you looked at her face you were compelled by an anointing believe me i have seen this thing work in my life i prophesy to you men who have no business blessing you as they look at you i compel it from their spirit may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you Thank you for lifting. 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 We are rounding up, but the Lord is giving me a word here. The Lord is speaking to a family here and he's saying I should tell you it will be like a dream when in three weeks it will change your life. It will be like a dream. 21 days in three weeks he will change your life. Whoever this is for I release it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is also speaking to one person. You are going to start a business next month on the 5th and I'm seeing before 31st, it has made you a millionaire. In the name of Jesus. I'm not motivating you. I'm speaking as the Spirit is giving me unction. You don't believe it, you will never see it. Never, ever see it. Every difficulty you came here with, in the name of Jesus, you leave it down here and walk back free. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, in one minute, everyone still standing. I want to make two altar calls now, very quickly. The first, please keep standing, everybody. No moving around, inside, outside, please. There are people here, men and women, who you have seen the things that the Lord has done by His Spirit. Please, let's keep standing to honor them. And whilst you watch the power of God move, the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need to belong to this family of faith, the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to completely surrender my heart to Jesus. I don't care how many times you have come out in response to an altar call. The second category of people who will join them are those who at one time you have made commitments for the Lord Jesus Christ, but you have found yourself derailing in many ways and you're saying, man of God, if you will lead me, I will run. I will run. Run to Jesus now these two categories of people i know there are people outside overflow one two three wherever you are please our time is gone i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain i'm going to count five wherever you are leave your seat and run now please clear the way for them one quickly quickly let's honor them as they come quickly run to jesus now please quickly inside outside young and old quickly quickly i have this to follow Jesus, no turning back. Run to Jesus, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Help me watch it. I have decided.
joining them, please keep coming. Don't sit back there. Now, look at me, brothers and sisters. I appreciate you for this great decision you have made. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. When you come to him, he has the power to make you. You have no ability to change yourself, but you have the willingness to hand over your life. I want to pray for you. Listen, I don't want you to just recite this as a poem. I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart. Standing before Jesus, the firstborn among we the begotten, and his holy church. I want you to make this confession from the depth of your heart. Lift your right hand as a symbol of surrender and say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you died for me. You shed your blood for me. You rose again for me. Tonight, I willingly receive your life into my spirit. I declare with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I confess with my heart that God raised him from the dead. I declare right now that eternal life is mine. I receive it into my spirit. I'm free from the power of sin, the flesh and Satan from today. I move forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. I pray for you. Spirit of the living God, you represent the presence of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying in a very supernatural way. Spirit of the living God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let these ones never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they never be the same again. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that their lives will be objects of praise. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven. I declare a new life for you. I break away from you every influence of darkness capable of jeopardizing the quality of God's life in you. I release you to be victorious. I make you victorious by the power that is in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the lord thank you for this great decision now i want you to follow the lady waving her hands they would um lead you outside have a few details and then um, just communicate a few things to you please cooperate with them the lord bless you i love you and congratulations very quickly please guide them guide them very quickly let's do this as fast as we can dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.